Hey everyone, you're listening to the official podcast of 4PlayerNetwork.com. Check us out at that address for everything you need to know about our community, monthly giveaways, and nightly live streams. You can even support us on Patreon at patreon.com slash 4player. And last but not least, you can catch the live recordings of these podcasts every single Thursday night on our Twitch channel. We hope to see you there. Enjoy. Welcome to Four Player Podcast, episode 510. It is July 5th, 2017. My name is Nick Henderson. I am joined to my right by Brad Simons. Yeah. What up? Brad Simons. What up? Brad, say something. I, that is something. Greetings, Nick. How Thank are you. you doing today? Thank you. Nolan. Hey, everybody. Hedstrom. Nolan Hedstrom. That's me. <laughs> I'm Nolan. Christopher Guthridge. Hello. And, uh, That's not uh, enough. Give me more. Ahoy! Salutations! <laughs> Alfitasen! Wait, give, is Alfitasen hello or goodbye or is it both? Uh, Aloha! Give me a shanty. Mm, wait, wait, what wait, do you do one? with a drunken okay, sailor? Let's... What do you do with a drunken sailor? What? Yeah, there we go. Yeah. More of it. What do you do with a drunken sailor? No, that's good. No, you morning. can stop. You can stop now. Why, Why did they say Erlai? I don't know. It's stupid. I'm pretty sure that's just how they spoke back then. Yeah. Our lie in the morning. Anyways, welcome to the show. Before we get started, uh, I want to remind everybody, Discord. We have a community Discord that I'd like everybody out there to join. Discord.gg slash 4player. Someone can post a link in that in chat where people are watching us record this live at twitch.tv slash 4player podcast. We'd love for you to be a part of our Discord. It's free. Uh, you can hang out with us. You can hang out, You can talk to everyone in the community throughout the day, even when we're not streaming. So... That's consider that the official invite. Please, please be there. Um, I also want to uh, start the show off as we normally do. Well, actually, before you know, before I get to that, how's everybody doing? Yeah. How are y'all doing? Hanging yeah. in there. All right. In a weird is little, place. A little low energy today. Is it because I think it's, it's win- the heat? Is it because it's Wednesday? Yeah, we're not used to Maybe. doing this this yeah. early in the week. I don't know. For me, yeah. it's Monday. It feels a little like a Monday because yesterday was July fourth. It's like yeah. we had Monday and then we had a day. And then for me, I- it's Saturday. <laughs> what? No. Okay, I'm really confused. Did anybody else have to work Monday and then have Tuesday off and no. then go back? I worked I mean, Monday. On paper, yes, but then my boss was like, he's like, on last week he was like, hey, everybody, I'm not going to be in the office Monday. Do with do uh, what you will with that information. <laughs> and then we were all like, okay. So none of my team Man. was at work. Did anybody do anything exciting for the 4th? Shot off fireworks. Ate I actually watched a huge, like, 25-minute firework display from the back of a boat underneath it. Whose boat? Joel's. Oh. Sounds great. I watched some fireworks. <laughs> I went there yesterday afternoon with his family. We, uh, we went over to my roommate's boss's house, and they were having a big party, and we shot off fireworks, and some people almost got hurt by fireworks. It was yes! great. Nice. It was that's, great. That's, that's, if you, yeah. That has to happen. It happens, <laughs> I'm sure, a lot. I just drank beer, ate hamburgers, and played board games. Mm. Perfect Fourth of July. Yeah, very American. Very nice. Sounds like freedom. Mm. <laughs> Sounds like freedom to me. Tasted like freedom. Um. All right. Any, anything else? Yeah. What is what is with the low energy? It's today? Wednesday. Yeah, this is me on just, Wednesday. Can we stop the weird. whole Wednesday thing and go back to Thursday? This is oh, weird. No, no, you, it's we're good. We just need we just need to warm up a little bit and just get into it and talk about some things, and then our energy will yeah, pick I, I up a little bit. I think once we start bit. talking about games, a little bit. Once, yeah, once, you know, even the stuff I'm talking about, I'm not feeling. I, I, I I'm oh. thinking that this is going to be the whole podcast. Let's just shut it down. I, <laughs> I've got stuff I want to talk about. Yeah, I've got stuff I'm going to listen to. Yeah, that's true. I will say that I did see two. Two movies this week. I saw mm-hmm. I saw one two. movie. One of two. Which, two. Yeah. A movie I saw day? fourteen. Mm-hmm. What? False. What? I do not believe you. What did you see, Nolan? I saw the big sick baby driver. Okay. <laughs> Back up. What? I, the big sick baby driver. It's How about, was that? Pretty good. It's about this giant like. Essentially, it's, he's a man. He's like Robin Williams. Did you see that movie, Jack? Yes. He grows up really fast. Yes. And then he wears a diaper, but then he gets the flu, Okay. and he's driving a taxi, and crashes into um, John John Hamm. Hamm. (laughs) 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 And 
And then, yeah. Keep going. And then there's a gunfight. Mm -hmm. There was a firefight. And it's in Atlanta. (laughs) Yeah, in Atlanta. Uh, And then after that... And then they all go uh, to a diner. The John Hamm's in a coma. He's in a coma. Uh, Yeah. And... uh, Kumail Nanjani's really sad about it because he's in love with John Hamm. Yep. Um, But they've only had one date. Yeah. And uh, Kumail, uh, uh, he was the baby driver. Right. Um, And so then... He ha- he he's How long can I let this go? Uh, I don't know. As long as it takes. Uh, but anyway, yeah, I, I saw the Big Sick. Uh, great Which movie. I've heard was great. Uh, no, definitely good. Hilarious. Uh, some really really funny uh, scenes. I was really worried they had spoiled most of it in the trailer. They did not. Uh, they they held plenty back. Um, <laughs> the movie was good. It was it's more than I can say for some other movies coming yeah, out very true. soon. Uh, I feel like. Uh, <laughs> I did to, to, to just briefly without I don't want to say spoiling the movie. I mean, it's you know you kind of know what it's about, but it's 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 humorous and it is heartwarming. I uh, like both of those yeah, things. Definitely would recommend anybody to see it. Um, and then uh, I also saw like most other people in this room, Baby Driver. Yeah, Bape. dude. That Brad, movie, did you see Baby Driver? Yes, yeah, so we all saw Baby that movie. Driver. Is so good. Holy shit, it's pretty good. I bought the soundtrack within like. Ten after. Do you know that like first that first scene, the, the the long take at the very yeah. beginning of the movie? Apparently, it took them twenty eight takes to do that. That's it. Yeah. What do you mean? That's it. <laughs> it seems like it was a pretty complex scene. Yeah. But yeah. But yeah, it was a pretty good movie. Times. Mm-hmm. That's a lot. Yeah, it is. Uh, Depends on where you're sitting, I suppose. Yeah. It's a lot. But yeah, the movie is fantastic. And also, uh, fun fact: all of the driving was all practical. Yep. No, like, CG, like, when they're, like, in the cars yep. and stuff like that. It was all... Even that crazy, uh... I don't even know what you call it. Like, the 180 and then the 180 the other direction. Yeah. Like, in one... A Jim Connor shit? Whatever you want to yeah. call that. I don't know what the fuck that was, but I'd never seen anything like it. That was great. I didn't realize that Edgar Wright's last movie was, uh... Was it? it was the World's Scott. End. Yeah. Oh. The World's End. Yeah, it was Simon yeah, Pegg the, and... The bar crawl one? Yeah. I... Like we watched it at our house when we lived together, Nick, so... You've ones. seen it. <laughs> I don't know how much you paid attention to it while you were yeah, watching it. Yeah, I must it. not so have. It's still Simon Pegg and Nick Frost. I was like, and... Shaun of the Dead? Yeah. They go to a bar in that one. Yeah, yeah they, they go do. to a pub. But anyway, uh, Baby Driver, pretty good movie. But he did all. He did that too, didn't he? Mm-hmm. He didn't do Shaun of the Dead? Mm-hmm. Yes. And Scott Pilgrim mm-hmm. and all that good stuff. And mm-hmm. yeah. Hot Fuzz. Hot Fuzz. Oh, Hot Fuzz is so good. I have I re- never seen Hot Fuzz. Well, I rewatched really? that a couple of I, couple I months ago. I think... I honestly think Hot Fuzz is his best movie. Oh, no, no. For me, it's it just, is fucking way up there. Yeah. I mean, Baby Driver is fantastic, but I mean, as far as like... It, well, I mean, as far as his comedic movies, that one is much funnier than it, Baby It's Driver. hilarious. But Hot Fuzz is such a good movie. It's so good. I don't know. Well, Baby cool. Driver is really good, though. I'd have to watch it a couple One, one of my favorite scenes is the, is the Yarp scene. Yarp? Yarp? <laughs> Yarp? <laughs> yeah. Anyway, yes. Anyways. Uh, excellent movies. Good, good, good stuff. Highly recommend those. Yeah. Uh, I would like to. I would honestly like to do a popcorn cast mm-hmm. coming up soon. Maybe. I mean, b- Baby Driver it. would be good because we've all seen it already. Mm-hmm. Uh, Spider Man's coming up next week, and there's I think there's a lot to unpack there. Mm-hmm. So maybe we'll do a, a popcorn cast for one or both of those. We'll see. Uh, we'll keep everybody posted on that. But anyways, before we get we into should do a combo popcorn cast and call it Baby Spider Man. I like. Baby Spider-Man driving home. Yeah, Baby Spider-Man driving to homecoming. Nice. Well, okay. I'm just saying because Tom Holland is a younger Spider-Man. He's baby-faced, if you will. Yeah. And Baby True. Driver. Um, before we get into the video games, and I know I we have we actually have a few things to talk about tonight. Crispy played a v- Star Trek VR game. Did you say did. you were about to say Crispy played a video game? <laughs> no, yeah. Crisp, I was finally. Say, <clears throat> with a shot. Crispy played a VR game is what oh I was going God. to say. But uh, yeah, you played you played the Star Trek VR game, so we'll I talk. I played ab- Star Trek VR. So yeah, we'll talk about that and a few other things. But before we do that, I want to get to feedback from last week's episode. Uh, reminder: if if anybody Bridge if anybody wants to chime in on anything we talk about, including Star Trek Bridge Crew, Bridge. thank you, Crispy. You can leave a comment on the site at fourplayernetwork.com. We'll read it back at the beginning of that next episode. Address it, chat about it, whatever. Um, I do want to go ahead and announce the winner of our, of our giveaway for the month of June. Who did? This is this is all done through a random number generator. Is it? Nick? It is. All is you have it? to do to win is either you can leave a comment and it enters your name in the in, in the drawing, or you can retweet the podcast when the podcast goes up every week. Uh, 
I put everybody's name in hat. I do remember what random is that number. Twenty dollar bill random sticking number, out of your pocket. Nick? Random number generator. Who gave you that? And our winner, the oh, you mean this twenty dollar bill? Oh, self torment gave me that. Self torment's our winner for the month what? of June. Damn. Oh no. <laughs> yeah, self torment. We're gonna be in contact with you. You're gonna be able to pick any, a game of your choosing, uh, and we will provide that to you. So. You can't. We, I can't give you World of Tanks because I'm sure you already have a thousand copies of that. But uh, yeah, yeah. All right, have we ruled out the possibility that Self Torment is a tank? I don't. Anything. Anything is possible. Like, you know, po- like a you know an advanced AI tank that uh, via its a onboard computer, you know, via its onboard computer, it has access to the internet, so it obviously would access our channel and talk about tanks. Okay, but like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I can see that. I have heard PS1, his... Like, Tiny Tank? It was, like, cute anthropomorphized tank. I've heard his voice before. Mm-hmm. Now, or I've heard the voice of somebody saying that they're self-torment. So, there, there it is. Yeah, so maybe, maybe he's, like, some kind of weird kit from Knight Rider, but in tank form kind of thing. I don't know. But maybe. Tanks. Anyways, feedback from our last episode. <laughs> First comment comes from Tobley. Um, all right, he says, I reacted sort of negatively to the talk about how people negatively reviewing GTA V to show their displeasure with them removing the ability to mod the single-player portion of the game. That was an Did interesting sentence. No. Did everybody follow that sentence? Maybe. No. I reacted sort of negatively to the conversation about people negatively... So you didn't like what we were saying? Yes, but here's... <clears throat> I think part of the reason that I disliked it was because it was framed by calling it drama, which undermines the importance of potential issues. Sure, this harms Steam reviews, but who uses that as more than a general consumer barometer? So, so yes and no. So, I agree that there needs to be a forum to express issues with games, Yes, but I don't think the forum that is supposed to be used for reviewing a game should be used to address your personal issues with it. Yeah. And I understand that he says, no, no one uses Steam's for, Steam reviews for that. Well, that's because they're so fucked. Yeah. No one can use them. That's like a catch-22 there where it's like, well, they're Chicken fucked, the so I'm just going to make them more fucked. Like, I don't know. That's kind of like my opinion on that. No, I, 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 I kind of agree. I, I'm, I'm fairly certain that 90% of games have like m- their own websites with message boards where you can go and express your issues with the game yeah. and stuff. Uh, he goes on to say, uh, the alternative provided was to not do business when companies do things like this. Rockstar noticed uh, noticed that that people did this and responded. They would uh, they would not care if a few people dropped out when GTA Five is one of the best selling games of all time. They would not care if a few people dropped out when GTA Five is one of the best selling games of all time. Yeah, they wouldn't care. Yeah, yeah, they makes sense. Yeah. Anyways, um, can you believe one of the best selling games of all time did an homage to me? <laughs> I got that at least Dan's gaming. <laughs> God damn it, Brad. <laughs> you hang your hat on that one for a long time. Yeah. No, I mean Horror Month, that was a that was an ingenious idea. Wonder where you got that from. <laughs> we started beef! Oh god, Brad's feeling frisky tonight. Where's the beef? I'm not, I'm not feeling frisky, I'm feeling delirious. Is, isn't it only beef you- if it reaches him? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh god. Uh, people on chat like reaches him you say and they just like <laughs> go off. We're, uh, here we go. Uh Riceball80 says uh okay. <laughs> what was the what was the so he says a bug in your ass isn't a thing. Do you remember we were having this conversation right. last week? <laughs> it's a hair up your ass. No, it's not. It's uh, No, it's, it's not. not. It's not. He says, meaning a feeling to I do feel something. Like I've heard that, before. that that is the I, use of it. I got a hair up my ass and decided to play this. I have never heard I a hair heard up that. my ass. I've heard that. I've heard that. I think you're full of shit. No, that is the 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 use that my old boss used to use it for. A wild hair up his ass. Yeah, but she would just call it a bug. If you get a bug up your ass. Yes, that's what it is. No, H a i r or h a r e. It is hair. H a i r. I'm just making sure. Not a rabbit. We well, said a wild hair. Well, well wild yeah. Hair. I mean, oh, I, I, if your hair is up your ass, <laughs> you'd be pretty kind of uh, not in a good mood. That's for sure. Guys, it's not a hair. It's a bug. You get a bug up your ass. No, no. no you don't. No, you don't see, get a bug up see, your see, ass. The meaning. You get a stick up your ass. Okay, yes. Yeah, actually, you're right. We're talking about two different things. Yes. A bug up your ass is when something is in a shitty mood. No, it's not. Uh, the bug up your ass is that's nothing. That's not real. 
The hair up your ass definitely means like if you just are really inching to do something, do that. Yeah, that's how my boss would use it. You have a stick up your ass. You have a but bug in your ear. But she would say bug up your ass. Right. I'm gonna go with this, a bug up your ass because. Yeah, but that, but what you're the meaning you're making up. No, I am not making that up. I swear to God, I am not the only person on this planet who th- who who knows a bug up your ass. Like, what? How many bugs up my ass do you know? Oh my God. <laughs> He anyway. it's a roach? He left another. Oh, see, that would be very. Kill myself. That'd be very unpleasant. Uh, he also says, as far as the SNES Classic goes, I'm all in. Switch has a way to go, so I will support them for providing that to me. Uh, wait, what? Switch has a way to go, so I will support them for providing that to me. I don't want to switch right now, but I do want this. And of course, it's those that never played one that say you you can emulate on PC, quote unquote. I think one of us said that last week. Um, but I don't think that's the case, because I think all of us played SNES back in the day. I don't think that really has any bearing on this, to be honest. Um, Mikey JB says, I can't believe you didn't like Wet, Nick. Some people liked Wet, kind he of. He says, a little bit. just like your conversation about the la- later Fast and the Furious movies, those all sucked, <laughs> Wet was a really fun game. It was stupid and over the top, and I loved every minute of it. It's my guilty pleasure in gaming. I couldn't even get through that game. Wet? Wet. Yeah, that was a bad game. Like it was like a like a, like I'm like it's not even about the like the concept that prevented me from playing it. It was it was a control issue. Like it was just a fucking mess. It was supposed to be like a stylish character action game, all a Devil May Cry, but like n- pulling off like you couldn't really make anything look How cool. How are we having a conversation about wet anyways? In 2017. Well, we had we it came up in conversation last week and Someone commented on it. I'm going to broadcast wet. Go, do it! No! Do it! I don't think anybody has ever broadcasted wet on this on, on, on our stream. Wet's a good game. If I still owned it, I would stream it. That's not it. true. I'm pretty sure what has been broadcast. So your problems with it are purely <clears throat> mechanical? I wouldn't say purely. I couldn't get far enough in the game to really form an opinion about anything else in the game. So I play. I I'll be honest. I played it really because I was like, oh, it's got Elijah Dishku in it. I like Elijah Dishku, and it looks like it has some style to it. I bet this is gonna be all right. And then I started playing it, and I was like, this controls like ass. You said I like Elijah Dishku, and she's in this video game, so that has to be a good thing. No, dude. I, the logic no. doesn't flow there. I first of all, I worked at GameStop at the time, and I rented or I checked it out from the store <laughs> in order to play it. So her name is Dishku. <laughs> it is. Yeah. Rude, Brad. D- so that's her name. How is that rude? Because you're laughing. <laughs> Douche. Your name's Henderson. Douche. <laughs> Douche. Yeah, you're all douches. Uh, yeah, your douche fucking name's <laughs> Simons. What a bitch. <laughs> Douche. <laughs> Q. Anyways, Q. thank you for your feedback this week, <laughs> guys. It. That's all we have. So I'm gonna go ahead and hand it over to Crispy because I want to know. If this money we spent on uh, Star Trek Bridge Crew. You want to start with Star Trek Bridge Crew? Fuck yes, I want to start with Star yeah. Trek Bridge Crew. Right, it's easily right the, dessert. It's easily the most. <laughs> What's better, Star me? Trek Bridge Crew or Star Trek Nemesis? Uh, Star Trek Bridge Crew is actually pretty cool. Hmm. <laughs> I've been enjoying it. It's. it's um, this is not surprising. Could have seen that coming. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I don't know. That's. Take that with a grain of salt because I'm a tremendous Star Trek fan. So just the idea of playing a game where you're like on the bridge of a starship doing starship stuff. Mm-hmm. It, I'm already on board. Like I'm already like I, I want it. I want it to be good. Um, <laughs> it's just like I look at the screen. I just see your hands like yeah. Like how do I use my hands? Well, yeah. I, I was still trying to to position myself in a way that like the, the weird thing about this game is if you're using the motion control. Is, is Crispy's mic off? No, well, it's that's on. Saying. It's on. Okay. Uh, it was. It's not registering as much as it was when we were doing the sound test. I can tell you that. Maybe just move a little bit closer. Maybe reseed your mic. We can yeah reseed it, Crispy. I'll I'll mute it real quick. You're free to reseat without Once any audio with issues. Oh, and no. Plug, plug that shit we, back in. Did all the yeah. mics come from the same place? Yeah, okay. And then now let's check unpack. out. Crispy, how's it going? Hello. 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 Communications are open, better. Captain. All right. There you go. Cool. Uh, oh, God. <laughs> so, I'll just start over. I really have enjoyed my time with Star Trek Bridge Crew. Um... <laughs> What's wrong with their hand? 
<laughs> yeah, yeah. This I look like, up and his hand bends like in the opposite. Well, oh, what I was saying was the weird thing about using the motion controllers, which is what I'm doing here, is that you you kind of have to you have to reposition the PlayStation camera a little differently than how you'd have it set up for most games because. All, everything you're doing with your hands is, like, at a table in front of you. Yeah. So, like, it's really easy for you to just, like, put your hands out of out of the camera's frame line. Yeah, so you need to, like, and then put the it whole lower thing, than... Yeah, and then the whole thing stops working. Oh, yeah, I, I just jumped into a random game, and there's all these dudes here, and I'm like, hey, what's How up? How weird was it to see another person, like, look at you in VR? Oh, it's, I mean, it, it <laughs> was, <laughs> it's not even weird know when you know that yeah. it's, I mean, that's the whole, that's the whole, yeah. that's the whole so, thing, man, playing this with other people. Straight up question to interrupt you, is this like Space Team? Yeah. It right? is, except um, Space, the whole puzzle of Space Team is that everybody's shouting over each other, trying yeah. to tell them to do one, like, because not everybody has a complete picture of, like, what's going on. Sure. Um, so everyone's trying to shout over each other to get somebody else to do something really quickly, and they're fucking with your console. <laughs> yeah. <What are> you <laughs> they're fucking with your console yeah. while you're trying to do stuff. So, yeah. so the puzzle is 100%, like, on the console. It's not about sure. anything that's happening exterior to that. This is more like... You all trying to work together, being directed by a captain to do something. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Who's the so captain? The captain is a person. is one of the is one of the roles. If you were, <laughs> if you saw in the footage there, what was happening was we were all in a in a briefing room, mm -hmm. selecting our mission and selecting our roles and getting ready. There's four roles that you can play. You can play the captain. You can play the tactical officer. You can play the helmsman, or you can play the engineering officer. Okay. They all have their own. Thing, their own responsibilities, their own duties. Um, Were you all sitting around referencing like episodes and stuff? Were no. Were you all big Star Trek nerds? No, 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 no. Okay, so we weren't like sitting in there being like, oh, this is like an Enterprise when this happens. Or it's like Voyager. But no, no, no. But the funny thing is, is, there like is an open that, line of communication where you're yes, like talking? You have to. That's the only way you can. That's yeah. the only way you can coordinate. Is like so. For instance, like the captain. Is the only one who can see the the objectives. He's the only one that even knows like what the objectives for the mission you, are. Like, so he's the your, one that has to like tell everybody. Your crew? No, no, no. Why not? Did you just close? Why did, shouldn't you? Could, when, when I you mean, were you could, but it's not saying. it's not going to get you anywhere. It would fail the mission. When you were broadcasting you could, this, um, I assume that Chad could hear your the other people. Yeah. Did you just close them? Were there? <laughs> no, no. no why that. would you? Fuck that. Make people really uncomfortable. Did you get stuck in a Groundhog Day style time loop and only Data could? No. You know, I mean, now that your joke questions have knocked me off my train of thought. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, See, my question wasn't a joke question. That was oh, a serious what question. What was he talking about? Um, the captain's the only who can see the objectives. No, God. Damn you're talking it. about different crew. So you you were, you were essentially saying that when the game starts off, you're on the in the the information. I forget the term for that room you were in. It was like Should, a briefing. room. The briefing room, and you all chose your objective. Your like the objectives, and then yeah. the. Uh, and then the rolls, and then it starts. Yeah, and then it starts. So, so what, what position are you here? So in this right now, I'm playing the tactical officer. So I'm the guy that fires the guns and nice. scans the things. Um, <laughs> Is that what you're doing here? Yeah, <laughs> he's, he's firing his finger guns. Yeah, <laughs> when, I, when, I, when I'm not like doing anything, I was kind of just like dicking around with the with the move controllers. <laughs> um, but this mission is uh, we had to go to a couple different locations to scout out. A Klingon presence in this in this sector called the Rift. Um, so so we're trying to sneak around. We're trying to fly around these different areas to find uh, these like these like Klingon sensor posts, uh, so that we can scan them and disable them without getting picked up by their patrols. Now the the big mechanic around that is your ship has a detectable range depending on how much power is being poured into certain systems depending on if you have your shields raised if you have your torpedoes armed if you you know how what what range you have your your phaser set at all of these affect this 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 diameter around your ship that determines how far an enemy has to be from you before they can see you sure yeah. so a lot of this mission is based it, it, a lot of this falls on the the engineering officer who has to manage power so he's the one deciding like how much power the engine has so he decides how fast the ship can go at any given moment that like he decides part he decides how much how much power the phasers get so he sounds decides like that guy could ruin it like maximum range it, it it's fucking the the thing about this game is that there are people playing it and there are people who've been playing it for like 
a minute, like, since it's come out. So they know the missions. They know, like, what this job needs to be doing at any minute. Like, what this job needs to do on this mission. And, like, I'm kind of just jumping in there as a newbie. And I'm like... Are they the Klingons? I'm like, like, don't make me captain because I don't know what to do. Like, just put me at the fucking helm and just tell me what to do every minute. And and I'll, like, I'll I'll help us get through this as best we can. Um, But there's a lot. There's a lot going on for any given post depending on the type of mission that has to happen. I haven't played engineering yet, but the engineering console looks complicated. (laughs) And it's all, like, it's all the different systems of the ship kind of laid out next to each other and you can see they all have like six or seven levels of like eps conduits that channel power into them and you can reroute that power to different systems or you can you can re like you can change eps relays to feed into different systems so you could conceivably like pump more power into phasers than than should be going into phasers or more power into engines than should be going into engines Mm -hmm. which would give you like a maximum a maximum boost to that output like you can exceed 100 percent output on your engines but that that if you do that for too long it damages the ship you know so sure. so there's a lot going on with engineering the, the the most chill job seems to be the helm i really enjoyed playing helm um Wait, oh i remember what i was gonna say you were you were making a snide remark about us being star trek nerds and i was saying no we weren't sitting in there quoting episodes or anything like that but the funny thing is once the game starts everyone just kind of like knows how to talk to each other it's really it, it's really kind of eerie and like that was that was the coolest like most gratifying part about it for me is like I played a mission during the broadcast where they put me at helm because they just needed a helmsman and the captain was like okay I've run this a bunch of times like just follow my lead we'll do this and then he started saying stuff like helm bring us about to heading 180 and I like looked at my console was like oh there's 180 just turn the ship that way and it's like 180 I captain like it, it, it's so <laughs> funny like everyone just starts talking like that naturally like you you put them in that so situation and they just start like mimicking what they've seen on the show and like the game is set up so that 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 all makes sense like i I feel like i I feel like uh, because this game one it's only available you can only play it with vr right two i don't think this has gotten a huge marketing push i don't think a lot of people even know this is really out there so i feel like the the, probably the the, anything from anything in vr well i feel like i feel like there's the there's not a, enough exposure, so the, the 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 amount of people actually playing this is relatively small, and the people that do know about the game and have gone out and and put down the money to play it and 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 want to play it legitimately know a lot about the uh, the franchise and 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 the property and and like they want to be playing this game for that yeah. exact reason. Yeah, exactly. Like there is kind of like a huge barrier to entry on this, so so. Jumping in with a group of randos isn't, in some respects, isn't as daunting as mm-hmm. it would be in, you know, like, like League of Legends or something that like everybody and their mom sure. has access to, you know. Yeah. Did, um, did, did you did you ever in a were you ever in a situation where everyone started talking like characters from the show? Did anyone start no. talking like George Takei or something like no, that? No, nobody. Nobody really was like role playing. Not super a single. Hard, oh my. But oh but my. when no, not really. Um. When I was playing at night, there was... I mean, like, I don't know. I Why like, was everybody taking I it too seriously? I feel like Star seriously. Trek... That's, no, they're that's not, they're not, the real Star they're Trek They're not fans. taking it too seriously. I just think that y- your assumption of what serious Star Trek fans would talk like is just wrong. <laughs> <laughs> is all. <laughs> Fair Brad's enough. a little out of touch. Like, like you, like no you think accent. you think they would only make those like those surface references that like anybody would know. Well, but, those are the only ones I know. Yeah, Simon. So no. <laughs> I, I like. Can it's, you choose your race? You can be a human or or a Vulcan. That's it. That's it. Yeah, I mean this this is this is based off the new movie franchise. Mm. This is so this is like this is. So you can't be a Tribble. You can't be a Green Lady. This is supposed. He just to be, said human or Vulcan. What? <laughs> this is supposed to be like the twenty two hundreds or something like that. I, I I was a little disappointed by that. I was like, man, why don't, why wouldn't they put other like charter federation races in the game, like sure. like the Tellarites or the Andorians or something like that? Because they haven't shown them in the movies yet. That's kind of a cop out. How many like. actual missions are there? Um, I'm not sure how many campaign missions there are. Like this is a campaign mission that we're doing, but there's another thing called. Um, ongoing mission i think it's called mm. and it's it's kind of just like sandbox like just go out and 
will send you objectives and places that you can go and yeah. you kind of just deal with things as they come up. That might be a little bit more kind of like FTL-ish. You yeah. Know, it's more randomly gem- generated. Um, but... Th- the missions are pretty replayable too. I mean, yeah. because just playing through one time, like when you play through a mission at one station, like you really don't know what's going on with everything. Yeah. The whole time. Yeah. Like, like for me here, like I'm looking at like these anomalies and these ships that are on my screen and I'm scanning and I'm firing when the captain says, okay, fire. Uh, like, I don't know what engineering is doing. I don't know what this looks like from, from Any the helm. Perspective. Yeah. I don't know what the captain's seeing. Like, like, Playing through this at each station would be a pretty different experience each time. That's kind of cool. The other cool thing is, so the whole game takes place on this starship that they made up for the game called the USS Aegis, um, which is basically just kind of like an Enterprise analog. It looks The bridge looks just like the, the bridge from the new movies and mm-hmm. everything like that. Um, but they have a mode where you can play the classic Constitution class, USS Enterprise, NCC-1701, and... When you play that mode, nothing is labeled. It the bridge looks like it does in the TV show, which if you've ever seen the TV like show, the console the console just looks like it's covered in like hard candies and like jujubes and yeah. stuff like, and <laughs> nothing is labeled. And it like there's a button that you can that you can hit that'll bring up like the labeling for everything that'll tell you like oh this is these are your torpedoes this is your this is your sensor range and your phaser range, um, but everything like that goes away when you let go of the button, and it's. That's like hard mode, but it's yeah. super Hardcore fucking mode? cool. Like it's got all the classic sound effects and everything. The the on, on this on this setup, you can see I've got I've got a picture of like our sensor field right there, so yeah. I can see the ship, I can see everything around it. Helm has his own. If you play the if you play the original Enterprise, you're both looking at this screen that's set in the middle of you, just like in the original Enterprise, it has the big hmm. big kind of sensor display right yeah. there. So you're having to like lean actually like lean over like away from your console to like take a look at it for a minute and stuff like that. That one's really cool. There there's even there's even like special effects on that bridge where like if you take certain amounts of damage, like the NPC crew member on the bridge like one of them will just like ah like die and like fall <laughs> over the railing like we 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 finished a mission on that one and we're and someone was talking about it in the game that I was playing during my broadcast and we were like oh let's let's load it up again I just want to see one of the crewmen die so we're like I, I don't have footage on it here, but if you look at the archive, there's one where it's just, like, all four of us watching this one dude, <laughs> like, at a console, and, like, we're just letting ourselves get hit by Klingon, like, torpedoes. Just waiting and, for him And to we're do. just waiting for him to die, and we're all waiting and waiting, and then, like, all of a sudden, the girl sitting next to him dies, and we're all like, <laughs> oh, fuck! Like, <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. It was so good. Dude, now um, I want some jujubes. So, uh, yeah. just, so, on a more base level, though. Yeah. You know, this is a VR game. We we haven't played too many VR games yet. How did you feel about the experience just from a VR perspective? Dude, it is pretty cool. <laughs> I, I can't help but be jazzed every time I boot it up. Like, it, it just looks cool. Like, again, it's one of those things where watching it on screen isn't really going to help you understand why it looks so cool. Like, you, you don't get the same sense of presence that you get with the headset, yeah. obviously. Um, but just, like... Sitting at a station on a bridge, pushing buttons, firing torpedoes, pew, pew, firing phasers, you know, they need to work on controlling the, the helm, helm. Like, what? They need to work That's on always going to be an their issue. Their with well, who, who made this game? Um, this was a this was an Ubisoft studio called Red... Red Storm. Red Storm. Yeah. Red Storm. Um, and then I think Ubisoft... One they started of, the Clancy franchise. Ubisoft... Uh, well, uh, not Montreal. Right. One of one of their satellite studios helped them finish it. Um, but yeah, this was. I mean, this was definitely kind of like a B B team production. Yeah. And you know, there's not a whole lot to it. It's like you know, the campaign might be a dozen a dozen and change missions. Yeah, and then but they've like, got the the continuous exploring mode. But that would essentially mean you can play it like forty eight times each year. Yeah. Mission yeah, and have a different times, yeah. different experience from each station. It's kind of um, cool. And the whole thing, it, it's just those two modes, and then you can play by yourself or you can play online. So it, again, it's there's not a whole. I was lot playing going by on yourself. There. Work with other. If, like, if you're playing by NPCs. yourself, if you're this is actually kind of cool. If you're playing by yourself, you play as the captain, um, but you also have you have the option of using voice commands, mm. and the voice commands are are powered by the, the IBM Watson 
like voice algorithms. What? So so there's a lot that you. I mean, there's not a whole lot. I mean, there there's several different phrases that you can say, and, and the system's pretty adaptive and pretty good about picking up what you're saying. So like, like if you if you order, you know, you'll say like like ready for warp, and then after so you'll look at your map at the captain's chair, you'll select your destination, and you'll say prepare for warp, and then everybody will start doing what they need to do because there's like three or four different things you need to do to actually get your ship able to. Yeah. Go to warp. So like engineering has to charge the warp core. So he charges the warp core. Uh, helm lays in the course, and then he brings the ship about onto the proper tra- trajectory. And then when ready, they you know punch it. But you can actually like they'll they'll do all of that, and then they'll you hold notice? it, and then and then you can you can. Uh, you, oh, that's that's because the camera is <laughs> the camera's having a hard time He's picking scared. up the controllers. It's gonna be okay. Brad, um, it's cold in space. He's cold. We were in combat there. Um, but then they'll actually wait and there's there's an actual voice command for engage that'll just like oh, nice. like shoot you off. Yeah. It's so cool. Can um, when you're when you're doing the solo and you have the voice commands, can mm-hmm. you be like Captain's Log? Start eight. <laughs> no, I wish. Well that unlocks some secret like that's you know, like, that's the sequel. Like Easter egg. Debug me. I haven't yeah. seen that. <laughs> They also in in the single player mode, the captain can do a thing where like, so like whoever you're looking at, you can you can do contextual voice commands just to that station. You can do voice commands to the whole crew. If you're looking at somebody, you can also hit a button and like take over that station for oh, a minute okay. and then come back. Sure. So you could conceivably play the game where you're just hopping around the bridge doing everything yourself. But I mean, that doesn't that's not nearly as cool as like. Yeah, given the orders, working, working it, with other cool. people too. I it's mean, cool. yeah. this, this game, yeah, it, it's amazing. Like, I, I, I fell in with a couple groups where like we played two or three missions and we got a good rapport going, and I was like, okay, this is really fun. And then you know something would happen, I'd be like, ah, oh, I gotta go. I'll see you guys later, and that that's kind of disappointing, you know. Yeah. But if 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 we could conceivably get four VR systems and four copies of this game, it and would eight, it no sixteen. Wait, how many uh, move uh, controllers? Move controllers? No, yeah, no, eight. Eight. You you eight. can play with the regular controller. You can play. You don't need the move controllers in order to play this. You can play with the regular controller. The way that works is, left stick controls your left hand, right stick controls your right hand, and then the triggers are oh. your like button selects, which oh. it 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 takes did a second to be like used that? to. I did. I played the first the broadcast that I did was all like that because I couldn't. I only had one cable to charge those fucking move controllers. Yeah. Are you ready? Oh, oh my god! Oh god! I did that. Oh Jesus, Chris! <laughs> Startled me. I mean, it's it's a huge barrier entry to get four people who are friends sitting yeah. together playing this game. But like, if you could overcome that, it would be a great time. All right, we'll That's either cool. we'll either do that or we'll play some Space Team. Yeah, I played some Space Team yesterday. Really? Yeah. This kicks the pants off Space Team. This is like That's this cool, is though, what right? Space Team wants to be. Space which team Space is Team's fun. a great hey, idea. Crispy, your bridge Space is on fire. Team, it is. Space Team's fun. I didn't do that, but the bridge is on fire. Space Team is fun and it's a great idea, but like this is that at the next level. Hmm. This is it like is this is like like when we were playing Space Team and I was sitting there thinking like, man, this is so fun. Why isn't there like a Star Trek game like this? Like that's basically what this is. Beautiful. Maybe that's where they got the idea. Maybe. Man. So I'm still really in, I'm still really enthusiastic about VR, guys. It's so cool. Yeah, it has a lot of want, potential. I just want it to pick up. It's just want to pick up the pace a little bit. Um, anyways, uh, from here, Brad. Okay, because I know Crispy has another game. I want to come back to Crispy for the other game yeah, here in a second, up, bro? But Brad, I want you to talk to me about that DLC you played. Oh wait, you oh. Both, both wait both these Diablo are... Three Rise of the God Necromancer. Damn it! I fell into that trap. That is some good DLC. I forgot both of those are fucking DLC. Yeah. Yeah, go ahead and talk about Diablo 3. Well, that's new. <laughs> is it? Uh, yeah. Is this new DLC? Yes. Yeah. It's oh. new. Cool. And then, like, all right, last great. Week or two. New. Yeah, it just came out, bro. Oh, sorry. I don't follow I don't yeah. follow the, all the Diablo 3 deets. I'm sorry. Diablo 3, I enjoy playing a match or two. A match or two with my lovely wife. She, uh, she likes it, I guess. We both started new characters because I want to be the necromancer, so she played as a crusader, which you don't see oh, here. She didn't play as a baby? I told her not to play when we do the footage because it's probably easier to see what's going on if we don't. Uh, so let's talk about the necromancer. I mean, that's the kind of the new thing. Necromancer is probably my favorite class from Diablo 2 because you can have all kinds of crazy minions and stuff and do cool shit with corpses. And I guess that's... that's uh, For those people who may not be familiar with your history at Diablo... You played a lot of Diablo 2. I played a lot of Diablo 2, yeah. 
And Diablo 3. Cool. That's all I wanted. That's all I wanted to say. You played a lot of Diablo 2. Yeah, I'm not a huge fan of Diablo 3. I never actually finished it. In fact, we were probably we were in Act Two. Hey Brad, we're quickly gonna reseed your mic. Too. Yeah, man, what's uh, going on? I don't know what's going on, but it's something me and necromancy may be going on. Hmm. Hopefully, that made things no, better. Black necromancy magic. should help. That's bring better. my that mic back from the yeah, dead. Did. Um, well, you know, I've talked about Diablo 3 a little bit. I just, I don't really like the loot system or the skill system. But what I do like about it is Diablo 3 does a really good job of making skills that look and feel really satisfying. And the Necromancer has some very cool shit that looks and feels really dope to use. Uh, the, the skeletons that you see here, they're just like passively there. And, and the skills that you get from them are like the rune enhancements are just kind of like different effects that they do. Like uh, when they start out, you hit the... Did you have to the, like manually hit, summon them? No, 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 you no. don't. Not, not, not these guys at least. Um... But you hit like their command button, and then they'll all attack a single target of your choice with increased speed and ferocity and stuff. Hmm. And that's kind of how you command them. Which cool. I mean, you didn't have that kind of control over them, I guess, in Diablo 2. But they, but they were different. Um, it, it's different than the than the witch doctor where you don't have to actually summon them first. No, like the, the witch doctor they has just pets appear. that you'll well, summon. Well, they, but they, they just, just stay appear. Out. They're, they're sort of like a pet. Like a section where you could choose to have your skeletons, which there's six of them or whatever, or you could choose to have your golem, and the different runes will be like different elements of golem or, or yeah. whatnot. Um, and uh, I, I, you'll see me switching around quite a bit here because there's a lot of different skills and whatnot. That's how you play the game. That's the Di Diablo 3 thing where you know you don't really make a build, you just kind of swap with whatever you get. And you know, when you're leveling up, you're constantly getting new shit, so you're always just swapping. Mm -hmm. um, like this is an ice golem, which I'm using for the first time. I've been using this. This uh, this flesh golem or whatever because it, it synergizes really well with the various uh, like so so the other thing new in this DLC is, is all the enemies like leave corpses like little blobs on the ground which I don't think they did that in like vanilla Diablo three but now they leave corpses but that's cool because the necromancer uses corpses for his gain you know and then there's various ways that he can interact with corpses you know the the traditional is the corpse explosion which looks really cool in this one it's really satisfying but um uh, you, you might see it later one of the things I, I like to use is he has the ability to kind of turn like a a a, 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 a corpse into like artillery like, like you just turn it into like these these giant like lance needle things that fly from the corpse into the enemy so like the so when you have just corpses everywhere you just start launching them into the sky and it's just like raining down on them and it it, it looks pretty, pretty cool yeah, um pretty cool. especially when you know the flesh golem he has an attack that you trigger that's like his command <laughs> every time and, you say flesh golem and, and he'll jump at the enemy and when he lands he'll leave five corpses yeah which, you know, imagine, you know, using a corpse explosion or that thing I use, the the little weird corpse lances. It just, it just feels really powerful. In fact, I feel like this character seems, just seems really overpowered. I don't know if they did that because they want people to buy it. Because the DLC is kind of just the character from what I understand. So, and, like, none of the environments are going I mean, through? Or... I think where you're at in the game, every character is real. Real like, powerful? Y real steamroller. Hmm. Yes, that's true. I mean, I uh, well, I don't know. Like, like, this stuff seems really powerful. Like, I'm switching right now to the Army of the Dead, and you summon, like, like you hit the button, and it's like a nuke attack. But it's the most powerful nuke attack I've ever seen in this game or any Diablo game. You hit the button, and thousands of skeletons just go, Whoa! like, on a certain single point. And it does, like, insane damage. Like, it's, like, 17,000% damage damage a single nuke that takes forever to recharge but but then so so what i like to do is go into a room with just like i literally will just just you know create a train of enemies to try to create the biggest pack of enemies like lure them somewhere yeah, like yeah exactly lure them somewhere kite them around and, and uh um and uh do you do that in this footage i think i'm about to do it here Sweet. as soon as i get some guys but even here i don't even really have enough and then you hit like the here, oh, yeah, Jesus. I'm about to do it. I'm about to do it. Oh, and and they, you hit the button. Here they are. And, and it does insane amount of damage. And then and then instead of doing something with the corpse, I have revive, which which that's kind of like a corpse ability where you just turn all the enemies that you just killed into your own army. Mm. And they kind of fight with you. 
Then I'm doing some like bone attacks and stuff, and yeah, you're boning the flesh golem. It, there's cool shit. You you also have you can also summon minions as kind of like your R2 spell or whatever if you play on the console. Where uh, as long as you have essence or whatever Are you the fuck. Playing with on console? Yeah, yeah. As long as you have essence or whatever, you can. Um, you could just keep summoning them, but they only last for like six seconds. But 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 the thing is, you you alternate between that and your uh, X button ability, the the one that builds your your energy, your mana, or whatever. And you just keep summoning them and summoning them and summoning them, and you can come up with some pretty good synergies, I guess. But um, you know, like I feel like for the first how many levels in Diablo three, you're constantly getting new skills and new runes for those skills so you're just constantly switching between new stuff and i've gotten some cool new shit but but you know uh, I, I guess my favorite is definitely the uh using like the fleshy golem to create more corpses and and i i, I think i do it here where you just start turning corpses into like this artillery that just seems so so powerful so overpowered i feel bad for malia because it's not like i'm I don't give a shit about. My, I mean, one of the, my problems with Diablo Three is the loot. You're just always getting better and better stuff, and and so like it's not like my loot's any better than hers. We're just picking up and equipping whatever random shit we get. But I, if I feel like my character is just doing so much more damage than her, it's like sick. Cause she's playing the Crusader and she's got cool hammers and stuff. But like it doesn't really compare. Here I'm just being a. I'm just showing off abilities. So these DLC, don't actually work together. So but this DLC is purely you just basically unlock a new character. Class? I don't know actually. <laughs> How much are they charging for this? I mean, Fifteen is there bucks. A new chapter? I don't know. <laughs> Brad doesn't know anything. I mean, I've never finished this game. Like the, the furthest I got was Act Two, and we restarted. That's so we're first, we're yeah. back in Act One. I mean, okay. I guess that makes sense. So I don't know. If, you the, never, if, the, if there's another act at the end, well, Bob like it. you never got far enough to like start the meta of the game. Yeah, I mean that that's probably it. But I mean, I mean, say what you will, the the skill system still the way it is, and the loot system still the way it is, and that's mm. what kind of rubs me the wrong way. But that's not the yeah, conversation. Yeah, but I mean, you haven't gotten far enough to open up the other systems that complement all that. Is what I'm saying. Uh, like, like, like all the, all the, like the late game stuff. That, here's that like, skill. Uh, all the late game stuff that they added kind of in after the fact. It's yeah. supposed to make the game good or whatever. Yeah, I mean, I, I kind of followed the... Here's... here's Yeah, see those those blue, like, shards coming out of the... It's kind of a red fart nova that I have. Nice. Red um, fart nova. It's name, yeah. Name You'll, it's a nice see here, podcast. You build up a, a healthy amount of corpses and then you just turn them into... Flesh. Like land, yeah. see, it's, it's it's pretty powerful. Just pulling the bones Damn, out of them and launching them. Yeah, that's cool though. It's cool. It's fun. I'm, I'm gonna keep playing. I like I like my necromancers. I kind of wish I was playing by myself though, because just because this I'm class, really she gets really frustrated when I have too many minions. So I, I just kind of have to stick to the golem and the skills that don't summon more shit. Because she gets really frustrated because she can't oh, find her like, character. What's the point? And it's like, but this is the necromancer. And I'm like, that's okay. I could still do cool shit without there constantly being minions on the screen. There's even passives that, that give you more armor bonuses the less minions you have. Hmm. Stuff like that. So it's cool. It's been fun. Uh, it's, this is kind of like my shut my brain off game and play with, you know, just just something to play when me, me and my wife want to play something together. So Cool. All right. Well, since... We're gonna alternate because it's, it's you and Crispy tonight leading the impressions. Right. Crispy played another game. I had one game I could bring up. I don't have footage oh, of it. Okay. Yeah. Go for it. No, I was just uh, I, before the podcast. I had started playing The Last of Us. Oh. Uh, yeah. And I think I brought up a while back that Bernadette never actually played it with me uh, when I originally played. She only played a little bit. Yeah. So we played it a couple of months ago, or like a month, whatever, not too long ago. Uh, and I was like, you know what? I never played that grounded mode. And so before the podcast, There's a reason so, for that. People were late and I was waiting. I booted that up and I played through actually a pretty big chunk because I was skipping cutscenes. And you know, when you skip cutscenes, you can get through the game pretty quick. Uh, but I was playing in the grounded mode, which essentially there, you, so you have no listen mode, there's no HUD, there's no health, like so you can't see what your health is. Enemies do three times damage, enemies see you faster. Um, and like Brad was watching me play some of it where like if a guy got the jump on me, he like punched me and I died. <laughs> um, and, but honestly, the thing I liked most about it was the no listen mode. Cause it completely changes how you play that game. Like, yeah. Just not going into listen mode. And I feel like you do have to be a little more, you have to be like ultra aware. Of yeah. And you, you get, you kind of like, I was, um, uh, you know, 
having to you know you know, go in and out. I mean, there was the the wharf scenario, uh, which is an early on area where there's a lot of dudes. I got you know I got seen because he, he, enemies see you very easily even from far away, um, and so. I had to kind of, you know, hide behind something and then sneak up on somebody while they were searching for me. And it felt really good not using the listen mode. Now, granted, there was a, another scenario where I get really frustrated because you don't have a whole lot of ammo and I just like, ugh. But uh, I'm, I'm kind of excited to play this in this super difficult mode uh, just to see how it goes. But yeah. Good luck. I probably should be playing other things. I can also briefly mention, since we're just kind of rattling off a few sure. games, I, I don't want to talk about it at length, obviously. I, 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 I am officially in Route B. Of near automata just wanted to go ahead and drop that little update I'm, I'm hoping that maybe i can get through root b before next episode just do you make it through a root uh, a root a podcast a yeah. podcast yeah. I, I mean I, root C. I hear everything after root b goes a lot faster oh if, yeah mm. am i am i correct in that assumption towards the, end of root b. towards the end of root because like or yeah no root c is when everything really really picks up okay yeah. so root a and root b are without a doubt the longest parts of that game i would assume so yeah yeah all right how, do you, I how do you like hacking i'm not doing a whole lot of it oh really <laughs> no, dude you got to dude, dude. no i dude. mean like there was a part i was playing at the very beginning of the game where you're it's the where you're on the the uh the deck of the of like the, the big i forgot what it was like when you're the first ro- machine that you're going there to tra- track down and kill them and, and you're like on the deck and there's like it's just sending like swarms and swarms of dudes and i didn't even know that i could like ran- be randomly hacking these dudes and people in chat were like nick hack them and i wasn't reading chat and i was just sitting here and i was just like using yeah. my pod to just like mow them all down yeah, he can i got get really the, powerful with this i pod. got to the entire sequence without hacking a single machine and people were like you gotta hack nick you gotta hack and then like i finished and they were like Oh, or you can do that, I guess. We definitely don't have to. The game's too easy to worry about that. But dude, yeah. you get some like hacking specific abilities. Like you hack one dude to kill it, and then it'll like stun all the enemies around it. Dude, yeah. Like once that's hacking useful. became a thing, like I just—I mean, I dropped that combat. I found hacking hmm. more fun. Yeah, hacking than the is uh, hacking. The like, second playthrough is so much better than the first because you get the hacking. This is good to know. I'm glad I'm learning all of this I mean, before I start the game. I mean, the thing is, I think y'all have a bigger problem with the with the combat than I do. I actually really enjoy the no, combat. No, I mean, it's not a problem. It's just it's a problem with the combat. Just, I mean, like I'm enjoying the the, I'm enjoying the hacking now that I I know it's there, and I'm I, I've only played like an hour or maybe an hour and a half into Route B, so I'm It'll, not very far. You, I mean. You'll probably, I don't know. I think maybe it's kind of cool. Maybe you won't get to this point, but you might get to a point where you want to just start doing hacking just to, like, get through combat encounters. Just yeah. to, like, get to the next thing. Does it actually make combat go faster? I feel like it would make it go yeah. slower. Because no. you have to wait for, like, the... Because a lot of those enemies are really easy enemies. to hack. And then they explode and, like, deal damage to enemies around them. Like, well, yeah, it, no, that's cool. I mean, I, and I'm, I'm, once you start wrong, getting some chips that support I, hacking. I'm starting to explore hacking you, more. You so. should... Don't... D- don't drop hacking. Like don't don't I'm neglect not, it because a I lot of just a lot of like <laughs> a lot of the cool like a lot of the really I know I know but what I'm saying is like if you're kind of cold on it now and you're just like eh whatever it's a fighting game I'm just gonna fight like some of the really cool stuff that happens in the game happens is done through like hacking yeah so like like there's some really cool like maybe story related moments that happen later that if you've been doing more hacking and you're sure. more familiar with it and the better you are might be. I mean, I'm enjoying it more because, like, the first few times I did it, it was very, like, you know, just, like, shoot the, like, bouncing dot. I was like, this is kind of lame. Uh, and then I started getting a few that were dramatically get, different and yeah. more complex. And, 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 I, was like, okay. and I always do it in, like, new areas because, like, the when the way the music shifts is really cool. Yeah. 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 Like, I, I listen to just the 8-bit, like, soundtrack Yeah. for the game sometimes. And, like, the music is so good because... It really sometimes Where people do like eight bit soundtrack. Sometimes people do chip tune YouTube. Sometimes oh. people do chip tunes, and it doesn't actually sound like music from like in NES or whatever. Yeah, mm-hmm. but I feel like this music does, and it, it just, I, I just am imagining like the sickest NES game when I listen to that music. It sucks. None it's of that really good. None of the ret- none of the the, the retro uh, music in in the game is on the soundtrack when you buy it, which. Oh well, it's like because like, you gotta hack the soundtrack. It's like 35, 40 tracks on that soundtrack, and none of them are the. Are, are oh like the, yeah, there's way more tracks than forty though. <sighs> Fuck man, why? Why is there's uh, actually multiple endings to tracks? Nick, it drives that me you crazy. Can't, you can you buy fucking and soundtracks and they don't include all the fucking music. Anyways, uh, 
that's all I wanted to say. I'll give you all a little updates here and there. I'm, I'm gonna try. I'm trying to plow through that game at this point. So. Oh, make sure you do all the side quests. I mean, I'm doing most of them. Don't feel like you have to do all the side quests. I'm doing the ones that interest maybe me, which should. is most maybe of them. Maybe they're good. Maybe you should um, have done more. Okay. Crispy. Hmm. You have another game. Talk about that. We're gonna hear Crispy's game, and then we're gonna take a break, and then we're gonna open up the second segment with your last game, Brad. That's just heads up, Crispy. So. Last week, you might remember, I was really excited about Gundam Versus coming out because I thought it was coming out this week. Mm -hmm. I was mistaken. Yep, you were in the wrong country. So, in my fit of rage and panic, I bought the English subtitled version of Gundam Breaker 3 from Amazon. Uh... Is this not one of the Versus games? This is not one of the Versus no. games. This is part no. of the Gundam Breaker series, which I, I'm not sure if the other games are like this. They might have been. The, the, as far as I understand, these games were like on PS Vita before this one. Oh, wow. This game's know. also on Vita. I think 2 was a Vita But you're playing game. it on what, PS4? I I'm playing it on PS4. Um, they might have also. I, I really don't know. I don't know where they came from. But, uh, and again, I don't know anything about the series before this one. Um,. So I'm not sure if they're all like this, but this game in particular is based around Gunpla, Gundam plastic models. Yeah. Okay, so I was looking at this and I was like, "What the fuck? This so, does not look like the Gundam I'm familiar with." So, so what you're what you're doing is you're you're actually a person playing Gunpla battle. So you're building models and then fighting those models. Uh, it's very similar to like the Gundam Build Fighters and Gundam Build Fighters Try anime that came out and were actually really popular and successful for Gundam. Um, this game, because of that, this game is is absolutely a like fan service fest. Mm, yeah, like you, there might not be much for you here if you're not a fan of the Gundam franchise and you know like geeking kind of out over all these different mobile suits. Um, but I am so this was this has actually been really fun. Um, I I don't know how many hours I've played of this so far. I've, I've been playing a bunch. What is it? <laughs> it <laughs> let, let me let me let me get to it. He's getting there, Brad. He's getting there. The game basically breaks into two different parts. There's building, which you can see here. I'm building a a, a gunpla mobile suit. Ooh. Um, uh. And, and, and these suits are all completely like customizable. Every section you can see up there is a different section you can change. There's not really any restrictions about what can go with what. You can kind of just mash whatever you want together. So you can make some really ugly um, Gundams. Yeah, you can make some real fucked up shit if you if you really want. Um, but you have to you have to choose specific parts. Like you can't make a Gundam that's like all heads, right? No, no, no. Cool. Yeah, you have to pick. <laughs> you have to have one of each types of parts. Yeah, like you have to have legs. Yeah, you have sense. to have a body, arms, head, backpack. Uh, primary weapon, range weapon, and uh, you can add builder parts, which are optional, completely optional. But builder parts are basically like extra weapons and extra accessories that you can attach on. So, like for instance, that thing on on the shield on my right shoulder there is a is a is a set of hand grenades that I added on. The bazookas on the back is a is a builder part that I added on. And the cool thing about those build parts is they'll either grant you some sort of passive buff, like the pilot figures just increase performance across the board. Mm -hmm. They're passive. Um, but like the weapon builder parts will add different things. Like this menu you're seeing right here, those are different abilities, different attacks that I can do because I have specific parts equipped. So like because I have those bazookas equipped, I can map them to one of my D-pad buttons, bring them up during a fight, and then hit the... Hit the uh, Hit the uh, the build part button on the controller, and it'll do whatever attack or whatever action is associated with the selected part. Is this level yeah. of customization um, in like the one we played at E3? No, 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 this is not. No, the one at E3, like that, that is like you were getting the you were getting that mobile suit as it is in the game. This is this, those that that game is all about specific mobile suits with their specific power levels and abilities. So this one is about That's more of a fighting game. That one's more of a fighting mm -hmm. game. This one when you get into the game itself, once you build your mobile suit and you like get into the mission and you're playing it, it actually plays a lot like a Mosu game. It's kind of just like run through the area, kill mm -hmm. all the enemies, run through the area, kill all the enemies, boss fight, kill all the enemies, Dynasty. run through the area. 
kill all the enemies. They they do try to change it up with some different game modes, but even those game modes are kind of just more of the same. Like, so they'll have one called Monolith uh, Demolition, and you go into the area, you kill all the enemies, then they spawn a monolith. You go to the monolith, it'll spawn enemies, you kill all those enemies, then you destroy the monolith. You know, so... I mean, they're trying to shake it up, but it's not really. Okay, so, like, different. Dynasty Warriors um, is very, like, shallow, right? But this obviously has a shit ton of customization. Do you feel like that customization translates well to what's actually happening in combat? I think, I think to a greater degree it does. Because there are, like, there are a lot of different attacks, a lot of different abilities, movesets that you can use just depending on what kind of parts you're using. Um... And and your the the scale of like your your the scale of your suit's power does kind of make a difference. Like like I, I got some really good parts early on in the game and was just kind of like steamrolling through certain missions. And then I'd go back in and I'd be like, man, I really want to try to make a different. These are all custom suits that I made, by the way. Um, and then I'd be like, I really want to try something completely different. I'll put something else together. I'll send that into a mission, and then I'll be, like, having to heal myself back from, you know, a quarter life every ten seconds. You know what I mean? Like, like there, there, there was the stats. I, I haven't quite honed in on, like, where I want my stats to be, how valuable it is to go for, you know, the stats versus the cool-looking part, you know, the, the, the sort of uh, cosmetic customization. Um, but the nice thing is that there is a system for leveling up any parts you get. So, like, if you get a part, like, oh, man, I really like this Zaku head, you know, because it, it has the head Vulcans on it, and I want to be able to use that. Um, you, can, you can spend this, this kind of currency that you pick up in-game called plastic to upgrade it, or you can merge it with other similar parts to upgrade it, or you can... There, there's another one where you can, like, find recipes for specific parts, and then you have to, like, combine other parts to make it. Um, so, so, so you... It is very uh, the the scale slides pretty pretty greatly. Mm -hmm. You can you can do a lot to, to kind of manipulate. So so you can do a lot to like build the suit that you want because it looks cool, and then worry about making it effective. effective yeah. You know, um, which is kind of what I end up doing a lot. But this is what the gameplay is like. It's very hack and slash, very fast. A lot of melee combat. A lot of a bit of ranged. Um, yeah, so, you, so like I switch over the machine gun there. You'll see I like start whipping out the special weapons here. I've got the I've got the back mounted bazookas equipped at the moment. So like I'll kind of like hit somebody, knock them away from me, hit them with the bazookas, rush in, hit them some more, kind of thing. It it, it really isn't that deep. And and my split on like gameplay versus customization time has been about 50-50, oh, wow. maybe leaning more towards customization time. Yeah. Than actual game time. Is it scratching the itch that you wanted it to scratch? It kind of is. I think, I think it's revealing a new itch. That <laughs> well, that's good. It, 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 as far as, like, I don't know, like, I'm a huge fan of Mobile Suit Gundam, and I really, like, I've always been really into the idea of, like, the custom mobile suits, like, like, Char Zaku and, and, you know, stuff like that. Like, like, the kind of, like, taking something that's, like, just a very standard, like, you see it everywhere mobile suit, and then, like, tweaking it up, giving it a different paint color, and, like, having it be its own thing. I've always been really into that idea. That's part of the reason why I was so into Gundam Build Fighters was because that show was all about just, like, taking, taking mobile suits from the series past and being like, oh, this, let's tweak it, let's change the colors of it, let's give it some new abilities, and hey, look at that. Now, now it's not the Gundam Wing, it's Gundam Wing Fenice, and it's really badass, you know? I, I, I was really into that concept, so this game definitely scratches an itch that I've always had. As far as, like, the gameplay of it, it's fine. Like, it's very fine. Um, but there's no multiplayer. With, there's no, like, straight mm. PvP multiplayer. They, they have things. You can do, like, co-op missions with people. Which is what you're looking forward to Gundam versus. For. Right. But that you can you can do a thing where you where like people will upload their custom creations online and then you can fight like an AI version of it. Yeah. Um, but there's there's no like this isn't like a real arena battler, which mm -hmm. is what Gundam Versus is gonna be. And Look, I'm hoping that the combat has a little bit more depth in that than it does in this. Let me ask you this. But I'm really enjoying this. Um, how much of your enjoyment is driven by the license? Like like would you say that if this didn't have the license you would 
Like, if you were not a fan of Gundam, would I recommend? No, no, this no. Game I'm here? asking you. Other way. Like, 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 you seem kind of to get into the customization and stuff, and really yeah. enjoy that aspect. Uh, do you? Would you see yourself getting into like mech games that didn't have the Gundam license? Like, if this was just like a random. Because mech, I could recommend like, a, like Zone of the Enders or like Front Mission. There's like some, do, like Front Mission is like Final Fantasy Tactics, but with all the mech customization or. Or you know the 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 moment to moment action like Zone of the Enders second runner is like the best. Zone of the Enders second runner is fucking dope. Yeah. As shit. I I mean I would be. But it doesn't have it doesn't have the customization obviously. I would. Well, I mean I. Uh, I'm surprised you guys don't know that I'm like a huge fan of Mecha and giant robots well, in that, general. Yeah, but so, I, so I, I would you definitely I would definitely come into those games from that angle. I don't like this game. Doesn't even really feel like a mech game to me. It feels like a it feels like a Mosu. It feels like mm. a, a hack and slash, like yeah. a pretty, like, oh my god, I would a pretty superficial hack and slash game. It's fun and it's satisfying, but I'm definitely this is the kind of game that I'm going home at the end of the day and turning my brain off and playing. Yeah, you know, for a little while, mm -hmm. dude. Um, I'm really curious now. Just, I would just now that I'm thinking about it, I would love. To hear, to see Crispy plays under the Enders too, and yeah, talk to him about it's it because masterclass. It's like that game, an all-time mech game, man. It's so yeah. cool. And as someone who's not even a huge fan of mechs, like that game actually, <laughs> in Front Mission, <laughs> I've actually never touched Front Mission, so I can't really speak to that. You know the fifty percent customization? Yeah, it's like that with Final Fantasy Tactics. That's that sounds. Quite delightful. It's cool. I, you know, like I, I, I've tried so many times to get into stuff like, like Armored Core. And everything, yeah, that th was those big, are very tough to get into, though. I, I also feel like I don't know. Sometimes, like, like I, I used to be into Mech Warrior, like Mech Warrior, Mech Warrior Four back in the day. I yeah. liked Dude, that. I, one of the few PC um, series I ever really played back in the day. I used to have the only game, only PC game I actually like. Yeah, had me was, too. Was yeah, but Mech I think Warrior. it's because computers just always came with Mech Warrior. Yeah, <laughs> I had Mech Warrior I think that's too. Probably true. Yeah, I, I, I was too. really into Mech Warrior at a time before I was really into Gundam, and I feel like looking back at like some of the Western, like so my problem with a lot of like Western Mech games isn't the game itself. Like the gameplay can be really good and really well thought out, but like. Mech design is always dude, just like I, was, I hate. Dude, the mech. I hate this idea that they just like take a tank and put legs on dude, it. Dude, dude, oh. it was. I'm thinking back to Mech Warrior Two, and I'm like, I'm like looking I, at I this, like, and I'm like, Mech Warrior Two is like you're like you're battling. It's like an ATST that, simulator. That's real, man. Yeah, like that's, they're all that's how it really be crispy. I I know, and that's fucking dumb. <laughs> it's so dumb. Like it's just. How do you feel about dumb. Metal Gears? I think I think Metal Gear Zeke looks fucking awesome which one was zeke i think ray oh God, the new one yeah i think metal gear zeke look cool i think i think rex looks cool i think ray looks dude metal gear dumb. Ray, dude what metal gear ray was my favorite one i don't like i don't like the way ray looks i think i think zeke More and rex and than, and yeah. rex uh peace walker ray peace walker is, was a pretty cool design metal gear ray is from metal gear solid 2, two right yeah, yeah. yeah. dude and the uh best. and the shagohad was kind of cool yeah, but that that's the one that's like real angular because well, like, it's water based. Like has yeah. The, yeah, it was like it looks like that. Amphibious. Okay, that Ray was I cool swear until to you God, had to fight twelve of them. There, yeah. There's a there's a that mobile suit in Gundam called. Um, that's not I Ray's think it's fault. the I think it's the Quelby or something like that that looks like Metal Gear Ray. That I'm pretty sure Kojima was like, I love this, and like just did that for Metal Gear Ray. And I, okay. I, I hate it in I hate it in Gundam, and I hate it in in Metal Gear. Don't you fight also? Don't you also fight a Metal Gear Ray in Metal Gear Solid Four? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, dude. Rex that, versus Ray. Rex that, versus Ray. Dude, Rex yeah. versus Ray was like one of my favorite parts of Mega. That's awesome. 4. And I love that you control Metal Gear Rex for that because I think Rex is way cooler. Oh man. I I don't know. I like I I have a I I have a but 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 the the, the pendulum on that swings back the other way because if you get like if it gets too western in its design, I hate it. If it gets too eastern in its design, like like you I also don't know. Hate like it? like fucking <laughs> Evangelion, like I just hate the Avas from Evangelion. That shit. Oh, there's, so there's some stuff stupid. in Gundam that looks pretty so stupid. stupid. I mean, there is stuff that looks stupid in Gundam, but like this series, like, kind of came out of mechanical design. Like that was always the big. Like they they were like selling books on like like the mechanical designs of this of the shit before the anime had become like this multi series franchise or anything like that. Like that's kind of like where it was coming from. And I've always been really into that. Like especially the the more like war focused machines. Like yeah. from from like the war story 
timelines, like like Universal Century is all about the one year war. So like a lot of the the more like war for focus machines always look so fucking cool to me. But Gundam itself has this really weird bent where like it's either doing this really serious war story or it's doing like psychic super children piloting super robots and <laughs> they both have their merits but the designs of the latter tend to be really goofy and D- dumb does anybody could, so i actually have the zone of the enders hd collection is yeah it, do, does anybody know what the set like did that because i know that came out around the same o- time as Silent Hill the collection. ps3 version they patched the PS3 version. That's the one I had. Wait, they made a wait. What other version is there? The 360 version, but I, oh, I'm pretty know. sure they never patched it. Oh, I have a PS3. I have the PS3 like version. It, 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 like it was bad at launch. Like, but the, the PS3 version is. Some of the Enders Two was. Both of them. Fuck. But but <clears throat> this patch is good now. I don't know it just fucking sucks that they can't get that shit right on the goddamn disc. But yeah. Well. I mean, that, that's that's another conversation. Entirely, but I I'm have. Sorry. You know, I'm sorry that when the post-apocalypse happens, and Fuck we're all struggling off. to survive. Fuck off, Brad. But you, but I know where you're you going. You will always have internet. Fuck off, Brad. I know where you're going with this. It's, like I said, it's an entirely different conversation. I don't want to have. It just it irks the shit out of me. It drives me nuts. That's never going to change. Get over it. It will. When point the is, GameStop coming out on disc. Point is, I have Zone of the Enders two on PS3, crispy. If you'd like to play it. Sure. Yeah, it's he doesn't have PS3 though. I don't have PS3. You can borrow Fuck. one of mine. It's really good though. Cool. It is fan. You can borrow mine. I'm not going to use it anytime soon. <sighs> cool. right, anyways, we cool. need to take a break. I'd check it out. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna take a quick break. We're gonna come back. I know uh, Brad has one more game he wanted to talk about. It's actually a DLC for the Evil Within, so I'm curious to. It's actually the one DLC I haven't played, so I'm legitimately interested to hear about that. Uh, and then we have a few news topics, and of course we'll answer some questions from our supporters on Patreon. So if you're watching us live, don't go anywhere. We'll be back in just a few minutes. All right, welcome back to the show. Sorry. Sorry, no one. You're good. Welcome back to the show. No. Uh, I'd like to first, before we get started, extend a big thank you to Christopher Davis, who gave me a birthday gift during the break. A five-pound bag of Haribo gummy bears. Holy shit. I apologize if anybody hears any chewing during the show. I don't think to... I'm going to do my best. Okay, that's Chris... Guys, stop it. All right, you don't, you don't even have one. You're just, like, making noises. Can, can I have one? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, mine. <laughs> Anyways, um, thank you, Chris Davis. Brad Simons. Oh, yeah. What's up? You have one more game to talk about, and it's one I'm very interested in uh, Yeah, in I wasn't about. even really expecting to play this, because... Why not? Why well, not? this was the last DLC for The Evil Within. Yes. Mm. The only one that I have not played. And I have not played... Finish playing the first two. You should, though. No, I mean, I intend to, and I was intending to when I started playing, the, when I booted up The Evil Within today. But um, then I realized, because, you, know, you know, my new PC, I wanted to, you know, I had the, all the Evil Within and all the DLC on, and I was like, oh, let's see how well this runs, and, you know, it looks good. Um, but I started playing that... Um, the 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 other one and I was like well Nick's played these why don't I play the executioner because I remember him saying he wasn't really interested I could talk about it on the podcast and uh, see if yeah I specifically didn't play this one mostly because uh, you play as the keeper yeah it, it just didn't seem to me like it had it was it appealed to me in the same way that the other DLCs did well you know it's not as story driven I mean most everything is through these notes yeah that you pick up and stuff but there is a story. So why are you playing as the uh, safe head? It's safe head, right? The guy with the safe on his head? Mm-hmm. No, he's the keeper. Well, I mean, that's his name. Is keeper. Oh, is he execute? Wait, who's well, the executioner? Is he like a completely original character for this DLC, or is no, he? No, no, you're no, playing the, as the, the keeper. The, the safe head. head. The guy with the oh. safe on his head is called. Yeah. The he keeper. was being yeah. obstinate oh, in answering. Oh, okay. Uh, Sorry, I got confused. You are playing as the keeper. You're not playing as the executioner. The DLC is called the executioner. Though. Yeah. Okay, sorry. Continue. I guess, I mean, I don't know. I mean, you got to assume that I'm not reading all of the notes. but uh, Oh, I assume that already because I know how much you hate. It is a very note-driven uh, I, I just line. assume you, you can't read. You can pick up chairs and throw chairs. How does, how does Safehead read notes? He's got a safe on his head. No, no, how does maybe. he even see? 
I don't know. He intuits. He he does do the thing where like he rips his own head off. He like kills himself to teleport to another safe. That was pretty cool. Yeah, I mean he like does that. he does that as a mechanic That's to get awesome. around the environment. And you're kind of exploring the environments like like this is the mansion. Oh, I recognize this place. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And then later you kind of go to a different place that is reminiscent from the, the game. So, so here's one thing. It's first person. It's first person. You have a hammer. And, uh, well, you have a lot of... Uh, you you get weapons. Like, you act, unlike those first two DLCs, you actually acquire these coins in the environment from killing enemies, from hitting things that you use to level up your character. And you can, like, level up, like, your movement speed and, and your various weapons to carry more... Is my is my thing doing not loud? Yeah. Is it not loud? Is this loud? I no, mean, Matt, you might as well just reseed your mic again to fix it. I don't know what's what is, causing what is going on tonight. We did have this a couple of weeks ago. Brad. Yeah, but we had isolated that mic. Maybe yeah. it's time to buy new microphones. Anyway, sorry. Mm-hmm. Continue. Um. So, uh, it, and you don't just explore the environment. You kind of go into these like uh, these like portals, which take you to like these arenas where you're like fighting dudes kind of and then bosses and stuff and it's all story related i mean there's notes to explain it all but like it's just pretty fun because you have these mechanics you can kind of dash around and you're using your melee strikes and and once you hit them enough you stun them and you can either you can either grab them or like execute them but if you grab them you can like pick them up throw them into another enemy and then that would cause that enemy to like enter the stun state and and it, it's very much like um like one of the strengths of evil within is is kind of balancing all your 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 resources with your mechanics and just kind of that decision making of like well if i set this enemy on fire he'll trip and fall down and he'll set this thing on fire which can take out these enemies and and like the kind of weighing kind those of options Resident Evil 4, but even more so, like, because this is more of a survival game, right? Yeah. What is this pulse thing you keep doing? Uh, it's a, I'm accidentally doing it. I don't know. What is it for, though? It's I a, don't know. It was a- <laughs> it's for, like, finding secret stuff in the environment. Oh, okay. And, like, secret story moments and whatnot. Um, which, you know, this is a little bit of a clusterfuck here. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, you, you see that... See, so I'm going to pick this guy up, and then I throw him into other guys. And, like, later on, you'll get explodey guys, and... And you see how it stunned all those guys. And, and even though it's, like, obviously a very different kind of gameplay, uh, like, mechanics than Evil Within proper, you see that same sort of, like, design philosophy of of really kind of weighing, like, okay, what's the best way to dispatch these enemies, like, most effectively to minimize, like, me eating shit? You know what I mean? So, so... The good, the good news about that is is it lets me know that 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 philosophy is very core to how this design team like creates like combat yeah. and and, and th- that that means a lot to me because going into the evil within two it lets me know that that aspect which I really liked about that first game is probably going to be present in that second and game. The same can be said of the other DLC as well, especially if there's one where you don't really have any weapons per se. Yeah, it's a, it's a. I'm not doing using based. any of my stuff here except just hammering on dudes. It's not really indicative of, of some of the stuff that you can get. But um, sorry, go ahead. No, I'm just saying you, that the same design philosophy kind of shines through even in areas where you're not using weapons per se. Yeah, but I did play a little bit of uh, the assignment or whatever today too, uh, and you know it, it is more of a stealth game. But while I think ev- the Evil Within did you proper finish? kind kind of failed with, uh, at, at like some of its more alien isolation moments I feel like the DLC does a better job because you get mechanics like absolutely oh you can call out which is it makes a huge fucking difference mm-hmm. and you, you you have enemies that don't respond to like sight so you're kind of like using sound and it's cool did you uh did you so there's two other DLCs one's the assignment one's the I can't remember what the, the other I, one I was uh, the, the like the contradiction or some stuff yeah, well, like that yeah well the one the first one is not is just straight up more evil within there's really no the first the the two of them you're playing i mean they're both i mean the first one was still like all stealth i don't you, you, it's not really no there's only one dlc where you're it's completely stealthy where there's no well the one i'm playing is stealthy yeah there's another one other than that that you that play has combat as, yeah it has combat and you're playing as uh oh that's good because uh, that's what I really like. I, I want to... But I'm, I'm going to tell you this right now. Like, my favorite enemy encounter slash boss fight in this entire game, the entirety of Evil Within, came from the assignment. 
It wasn't so, the headlight lady. Was it, it was the headlight lady, especially when you get to the actual boss fight against oh, her. Oh, okay, gotta, okay. No, no. I was at a part where I'm waiting for an elevator, just trying to avoid her. And it was oh, no. There was an actual kind of like, proper boss fight against her, and it, it, it was hands down my favorite part of the entire That's cool. I mean, I mean, I think this game does boss fights really well. Uh, one of the problems here is uh, the final boss of this DLC is rough because there's like this part where he summons i don't want to tell you what you're fighting but he summons something that can kill you in one hit mm -hmm. and you're too slow to die. and well it's just it's just no you're not too slow i mean i've upgra upgraded my walking speed um oh here he is he's gonna kill himself and move to another safe but um no it, it's a one hit kill and you got to do the whole boss thing again Mm. Uh, the the first two phases, like again, just to get back to that point, and then it's so easy to die in one hit quickly until you really know what's going on. And I got kind of lucky, and I was almost to the point where I was like, "Man, this is bullshit. I'm just gonna like turn this shit off and YouTube the rest." That's how annoying it was. This, this also has a new game plus where you keep all your shit. Yeah, but it doesn't because you can still unlock stuff and new weapons sure. and, and upgrade those weapons and abilities. But um, and it's not as deep as it is in Evil Within proper, but it is. It is pretty satisfying. The problem is the new game plus doesn't actually get any harder, so it just gets easier at the more you play it, and mm -hmm. it doesn't that doesn't make any fucking that sense. Sucks, yeah. So so here I'm fighting this this big thing, and you know these turrets you can use, and the enemies keep coming out, and and I, I this, I'm fighting a new game plus, so it's like so much more easier for me. Dude, but one thing this is like even just even just watching this footage like. The the thing about people within that I fucking love is the fucking variety is crazy. Oh yeah. Like we've been watching like what ten ten minutes of footage here, and you've gone through like four different areas. You've done like you've encountered so many different types of enemies, and this is this in and of itself is just dramatically different than anything else that I played in the rest of the Evil yeah. Within. So it's I don't know. Like, it's not super deep. It's only a couple hours, but uh, you know, as a part of you know, they mix it up a little bit. Yeah. And it was kind of fun. Cool. Well, I think that I think that just about does it for uh, impressions. I don't think we really have anything else to talk about impressions wise. So, there has been some news this week worth discussing. I think. Mm -hmm. um, I guess I'm just gonna kind of let's go with uh, let's start with uh, that Assassin's Creed anime. I'm gonna talk about that. I, uh, heard, I, I didn't from hear the about producers this. of the Castlevania Netflix show that no one has seen yet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we don't even know. We don't really have much to gauge. No, but this but they, they did some stuff from Anime Expo did leak out, including mm. the intro and like a scene. By the way, that, and it, it looks pretty sick. By the way, they're they're gonna be oh, that's Castlevania. Gonna be, it looks Castlevania sick. is also gonna be at RTX okay. this weekend. See, and Gaius so. Baltar's voicing Alucard. Yeah, Gaius Baltar. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, from BSG. Yeah, <laughs> but um, I don't know. Like what oh. I saw. He was that guy I really didn't like yeah. on Battlestar Galactica. Yeah. He's the guy who no like, one likes. killed that. No, no, no. Not like, I don't like this character. Like, I don't like the actor because the actor can't act. Because yeah. <laughs> yeah. that actor's performance ruined my enjoyment of Battlestar Galactica, and that's why I stopped watching that oh, show. Oh, that's sad. Oh, wow. Because it's literally unbelievable that not everybody on that ship by two episodes in isn't going, this guy did it! Because he's just like over in the corner like... <laughs> like... <laughs> <laughs> yes. So bad. So uh, have bad. Have you ever seen him in anything else? We've got good he's news. For no, you. I don't know. I don't know who he is. He's doing a voice in Castlevania. Well, good. I don't want to see his dumb face. Well, you he, can hear he his dumb the voice. character after. Yeah, he does have right. a very no, no. But that's what I'm saying. Like something, something like Castlevania maybe would benefit from his like play to the back rows kind of wasn't twirling mustache wasn't bullshit. He lost? Wait, what? wait. I remember Ooh. thinking of someone else. So, What's his name? I don't remember the actor's Who knows? name. Hold on, I'll look it up real quick. Guys Baltar, that's his fucking name. The, uh, We've gotten so far away from the Anyways, yeah, no, what, what little I saw leaked out did look pretty sick. Of the Castlevania. It, it looked pretty and sick. And that comes out next week, doesn't it? I think. Of the Castlevania. I, I've oh, been pretty excited know. about that. I mean, I'll watch it. I'm going to check For it. sure. Uh, my question for y'all is... Assassin's Creed. Yeah, like y'all have any interest in this? What if this is good? Like it's anime. Well, I here's mean, I'll here's, check it out. here's my confusion. Like Assassin's Creed has made a name for itself by being like every game stars a different character, different time period, different setting, all that stuff. Like and kind Feudal of Japan. The thing is, like, to have like a successful television show or a series, right? You can, there has got to be that that through line, right? There's got to be that. And I mean, I, yeah. If it makes sense in anything, 
wouldn't it make sense for Field Japan to finally exist in anime? I mean, I, no, yeah. my God, you're no, no. I, I was going to say, I, I think, I think Feudal Japan would be could potentially be a difficult game, and so I think doing it as an anime might give some people some form of satisfaction of seeing that. I always thought like the Egyptian, the Egyptian setting for the would, be the, would be the difficult one to do, really. Well, I mean, that that being said, I've played, you know, twenty minutes of uh, Origins, and it was not great. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, just like it seemed a little bit on the meh side. Eh, we'll see. Come October. Yeah. Uh, oh, which I, I is mean, the I, new I one? I just don't Good know. God, that like subtitle is so Generic. meaningless yeah. now that yeah. I couldn't even place it. I was thinking, is, did he play one of the side scrollers? Nope. Oh. No. no that's <laughs> that the is new the one. brand new game coming out. Oh, I'll Creed be honest, Egypt? I'm very excited. Just call it Egypt. Yeah. <laughs> just call what, it Egypt. Call it Assassin's Creed Egypt? Egypt? Yeah. Fuck it. What does Origins mean? Wait, wait, wait. Well,. Do you really want me to give you that answer, or do you care? Because I could give you the answer. I mean, well, what is that? I mean, are there is a reason origins, why they're calling it Origins. But are you saying that Origins isn't the most overused derivative subtitle used in video gaming? Wait, did I say that? No, no, no I'm saying. Can I play as a noble dwarf? That? No, he's saying no, the I'm reason the game is called Origins it, is because like, it's the origins get, of the assassins. I, I get that, but like, it that does doesn't make change. Sense. That doesn't change that it's a bad title. I didn't. I didn't say it wasn't a bad title. We have. Does anybody have any opinions on the anime, though? No, there's. An, I don't think there's anything to have an opinion on yeah. yet. All right. Fair Other enough. than they could have called it. A, no, that wouldn't work. Sorry, never mind. I mean, first of all, so much of these stories are defined by their setting. That's why everyone. I mean, right now I'm, I'm more all, curious about. They could have called you, it Assassin's Creed. Send in your pants. I mean, it's not like what no. I'm saying is <laughs> this. The, the whole the whole the whole construction of. The meta narrative of Assassin's Creed is such that you could tell a story about assassins versus Templars anywhere from like cavemen to the future, anywhere it goes anywhere. All right, that's, let's not that's get what into they've this. done. So, so well, they're kind of where implying... and when it takes place is a huge part of of excitement. Is a huge part of the hype. Is a huge part of like what am I even like? What does it mean? It's not a thing until you know the location because the location is such a big part of the character of the story. So without announcing any of that, there's not yeah. a project. There's nothing. And oh, there's so. no details yet, even about where this is going to be made available. Like it's not. It doesn't appear to be it's like that. It's going to be a Netflix mm -hmm. thing. So I'm wondering where this is actually going to be it's going, released. It's only going to be available as a DVD with the Super Collector's Edition of <laughs> oh, God. the $800 that's collection. Well, there's so much real that. to that statement that it's gross. <laughs> Man, All right. Anyway, can't what wait else to, we got? I can't wait to talk about Assassin's Creed with y'all in October. Hey, yeah. Platinum Games has been teasing some shit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, they put out a teaser image, or they put out an image that's obviously teasing Bayonetta on Switch. Bayonetta mm -hmm. on Switch. Damn! Look at they that. they also the, from they have a new official Japanese Twitter or something, and uh, they they posted this, and then they posted another image like so like there's no hiding out the scroll down in that thread, there, there there's no <laughs> there's no mistaking, yeah oh yeah um uh, yeah so. So it's coming to Switch. Uh, I, I I don't know what it means. You know, I don't I speak like Japanese, is, but I, I feel like this is suggesting that. Are are they like is the tweet? The tweet actually has the text: Near Automata, Bayonetta One and Two, Wonderful One Hundred One, MGR Vanquish. No, no. Oh, that's their account. I don't. Okay, yeah. That's their, yeah, that's yeah. the Platinum oh, Games Bill. account. This line. is just their yeah. little. I think. Picture. I think this is cool. This is this is potentially good news, but at the same time, I'm also like these are. I mean, this is good news for anyone I think who has who has a Switch who has never played Bayonetta. This is not. I, this hey, is not, ba Bayonetta in your hands is cool, and and right? more ports of Bayonetta means more chances for really dope new outfits. Like <laughs> one of the coolest things about uh, Bayonetta on on the Wii U was all the cool like outfits and oh, shit. No, that no, definitely was Easter cool. eggs yeah. and stuff. Like so. the Samus, the Samus Fox. outfit. Oh yeah, that was fucking awesome. Oh yeah. I mean, I I would be curious. You could to turn see. the plane at the end into into an R wing. R wing, yeah. If you put on the Fox outfit, yeah. I, just yeah, wanna, I forgot about that. That stuff was cool. I just yeah. want to know if there's gonna be anything. If they're gonna if they are gonna do this, is there, is there going to be anything like? I don't what? think it would take. I don't what? think it would take much. No chance to convince me to buy Bayonetta one and two again. No. I want to know: Are these gonna be bundled together? 
Are they going to be sold separately? Is there going to be any kind yeah, of new content? I, I think it might... be a collection, right? I hope so. I mean, Probably. the thing is, I already have Bayonetta 1 and 2 both on the Wii U, and those those are pretty good mm-hmm. definitive versions, I think. Yeah. I mean, I think it would be great to have Switch, to have a Switch version as well, but I just want to know if there's going to be anything. Just, I need just a little extra just to push me over the edge to, to buy it again. We'll see. But, I don't know what this is, but I, I, I'm pretty sure the wonderful 101 can't, be on the switch because the wonderful 101 did a lot of the dual screen stuff crispy Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know where Mm -hmm, you're having mm -hmm. to like you're inside something and you're you're looking piloting the ship you can't translate that to the switch you have that's a specifically a dual screen thing and a large portion of the game had unique sequences just like that Mm -hmm. Uh, i mean do you think they could be maybe teasing they could do they could do like a picture in picture wait it might not be super elegant but where they totally could but where are you getting? Is, are there additional tweets that are teasing? No, that? no I mean, he's just not. looking at little images. I mean, I'm just, I, I, Chris I mean, Davis needs to stop these, showing random images, images with no context. From? From their these, official, can can we please stop? Like, just, was, did this come know, from confused. their Twitter account? I don't know. Or is this just people making? I think this? I think the important thing right here. I Someone think the most pro- the, the most important. I, is it? It says plat. <laughs> The official account. Yeah. That's the official account tweeting out pictures of Wonderful 101. I'm sure they p- tweet out pictures of one, one, Where one, one, one all the Where they're holding Switch controllers? Yeah, they were holding Switch controllers. I think that's just like maybe a desire. That That's much less realistic, I feel yeah. like. I mean, if anything, okay. like... If the first one doesn't make sense on the Switch, then perhaps maybe they're teasing a sequel for the Switch? Like, tailor-made for the Switch? <laughs> the Wonderful 101? Yeah. Yeah, I, I love that, but I'd bet my life against that. Yeah. Your life, Brad? My life. Your fucking life? Dude, I don't know, man. So what happens if it comes out? <laughs> Do we just get to kill you? We get you? to kill you. <laughs> Do we just, just get to murder you? Just slowly stab you? His gaming life ends when his child's born. Okay, let's no, go back doesn't. to... Uh, yeah. Okay. So, what's uh, what? What else did we have? Oh yeah. So I didn't. No, no one wanted to talk about this Persona Five thing. It's fucking awesome. Uh, a fan made a Persona 5 text messaging IM app for Android. So if you've played Persona 5... Oh, it's 5, only on Android? Well, yeah, it's because it, it requires... The thing is, Nick, with an iPhone, you can't do anything. Yeah, that's true. Because I, Apple will not allow you, give you permission to do anything. Sure, with just, Android, you can... There's a button, and as long as the app says, do you approve, and you say yes, you, they can do whatever the fuck they want, kind that's of. That's fine. I mean, But anyway, so they put out don't want to have an app debate. for Android... Uh, that makes the your text messaging look similar to the text messaging from Persona 5, uh, which is cool. I mean, it's not, trust me, it's not perfect. It can't do uh, uh, MMS. It can't do, like, multimedia messages right now because, once again, it's fan-based. Yeah. Uh, but it's still kind of cool. It looks neat. Yeah, it looks it like, is cool. Does it looks, have, like, a it, picture of the person next to it? Yeah. No, dude. It's like, like stylish, an anime, like, like, stylish but really, anime picture. But really, like, how readable is it? It's it's fairly readable. I mean, I, I have it installed on my phone, and I've I've done a, a few you know, text messages with it. it. Has some pretty cool animations and stuff like that. <laughs> Similar to the game, if someone asks you a question, there's that little question mark on the actual box or an mm. exclamation point and stuff like that. So it's it's pretty cool, guys. What's up, Nick? I haven't even started this game yet. Fuck, dude. Uh, that's that. I don't know. Like like like. It's daunting. No, mm. the the uh, there's been like some weird backlash. Against or like, the like, game? I mean, when people started it, everyone was real hyped. But I feel like I see more and more people that are kind of like finishing the game or like close to wrapping it up that seem really down on it. Well, really? Yeah, that's not good. I haven't seen a whole lot of that, but I mean, I've, I've not, that not like this is bad, but that just is just seem seemingly like disappointed, and that's coming from people. A lot of people who's like think Persona Four is like the greatest ever. So I mean, I can kind of understand that, but it's definitely not. People definitely don't seem as high on this game by the end of it as they did. I mean, I've seen plenty. I've I, there's a few people I know of that just recently finished the game that seemed really excited about the game after they finished it. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. I mean, this I feel like that's the, that's the nature of like anything where people get super super hyped for it. There's always going to be a a large portion of those people that are probably going to be like. This is not what I was expecting or hoping for, or, or didn't surpass my expectations. So therefore, it's disappointing. Like I, I mean, I, I see Prince talking in chat about the ending dragging on a bit, and I mean, I felt like that I was feel like that's the case with a lot of Japanese. Well, games, no, no, too. and I, I would say Jap- like I would any, say to- uh, both three and games. four. So I mean, so FES added a bunch of stuff to Persona Three that, in my opinion, did not need to be there. Like by the end of you know, Persona Three FES, I was like. 
come the fuck on. Yeah. Uh, no, was that no? That was a, no. That wasn't FES. Sorry, FES ended well. It was Persona Four Golden. Sorry, Golden added a bunch of extra shit that I. By the time I was finished playing Persona Four Golden, I was like, "Come on!" Just fucking X X X through like scenes where people talk. It just fucking talk so. And they would talk in circles. They yeah. would literally have a conversation, and then ten minutes later, have the same fucking conversation, slightly different. Like you remember earlier when we talked about this? Let's talk about that again. I'm like no fucking no just get through it and so i i think i think that could be and i i know some of you know chat was saying yeah that was one of the issues with golden while they did make a lot of improvements to the actual core game itself that yeah. was a downside so i mean i could see that that being uh a problem if, if five does that i'd be upset sorry i, I was kind of confusing my personas because i recently within the past couple of years played through two uh, three and four no i like i said i think three when was even, the last time you played five a couple months um, so the, the, the reason I was saying, so Persona 3 FES, like, has a great ending. Fucking there's a conflict, there's a final battle, then there's, like, two more days, and then the game ends. And it's fucking perfect. It is, con- it is like, Concise. to the point. There is some extra st- shit you can do after with the FES stuff that's added. You don't have to do that. Yeah. It's, like, Persona 4 Golden, like, forces you to do all this crap. Extra bullshit. Um, I think we have one more But who topic. do you miss more, Yukiko or Yukari? Uh, probably Yukiko. Because of all those damn days where the game wouldn't end. Not necessarily. All right. One more news topic. And this is Sony related. Mm -hmm. Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy is out. This is the HD remake of Crash Bandicoot 1, 2, and 3, right? Yes. Uh, it is out. It's a remake. I mean, this these are all new assets. Yeah. Like, this is a remake. This, is, this isn't this is a remake like uh, Tomb Raider Anniversary. This is more of a remake like... Uh, kind of like Tomb- Resident Evil remake. Well, that, that had a lot of new content. I don't think this has a lot of, like, any new content. I think it's just all new... Assets. assets. Top to bottom. I'm trying to think of another remake that's like that. Where it's not just like they cleaned it up, that they just created all new everything. Oh, perfect. Uh, oh no, no, no. The uh, the Monster World game, or the Wonder Boy game. Oh yeah, yeah, the, yeah. The, the, uh, Monster Boy or Wonder Boy, Wonder whatever Bo- the yeah, Monster, yeah, yeah, whatever. The, <laughs> the fucking the Dragon's Trap, the yeah, one that yeah. came out earlier this year. Mm-hmm. Um, that is basically the old game, but with like completely new assets. You know, I have a feeling. I would that call that. Or you wouldn't call that a remaster. No. I have a, a remake. I have a feeling that Shadow of the Colossus oh, remake is going to be Colossus this. Colossus is going to be a it's remake. It's going to yeah. be a straight well, up just new assets. That we don't even know. But like this is dramatically. I mean, the reason I wanted to talk about this is because one, like this is this thing from what I understand from reports has been really, really successful. Like this thing's been selling really well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And the reason I think that's significant is because you don't see a lot of remakes. Or remasters coming from this era of video games. Correct. Like, like you've seen some like kind of like touch ups from like the sixty four to the three DS with like the Zelda games, Star Fox game. But whoa! God damn it, Chris Davis! Oh, everyone, do something ah, lewd! Oh, everyone, no. do oh. Put your pants back oh. on. Take your no. pants off. Take your pants off. What if Brad is like? What off. if Brad like whipped his dick out, not thinking that it was gonna come back, and then all of a sudden, no, don't. How long is this going to take? <laughs> this is fantastic audio. Anyways. <laughs> no. Now the TV's off. Oh, God. Everything's falling apart. I think Guys, you this. you're ruining this podcast. <laughs> no. I, don't, I don't even know how I'm going to edit this. Even on, the TV's not. Is it back? Uh, The camera's back. The no. signal's not. Oh, um, no. You don't need to edit this out. This is a live show, folks. Live, live show, folks. <laughs> Crash Bandicoot. Crash Bandicoot. Crash Bandicoot. What the fuck is even happening? Fucking fix it. (laughs) Keep keep wiggling. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. That's it right there. That's the stuff. Uh... Well, you keep shaking. Welcome keep to the shaking, actual Nolan. podcast. This is what keep the podcast answer. would be like Faster. if you downloaded it from our website. All right, now slower, slower. Wait, wait, I saw something slower. flash. Now Fuck faster. it, just Go roll faster. footage. Twice as fast. Just roll footage. 
Roll that DM. Did footage. they just see like no one flash back into the screen for like a split second? <laughs> I don't know. It's gonna be a great YouTube video. The- <laughs> I'm so tired. Oh, this shit is gonna go up on YouTube. You shut happen? your mouth and keep dancing. <laughs> this is what strippers feel like. <laughs> Throw money at me. <laughs> Throw gummy bears. Uh, That's all I got. Give your gummy bear his cheese string. I'll take it. Uh, um, so. Wait, no, so on? like this why is a good TV sign. Because this has been so successful, I think this is a wait, good... Wait, wait. Give me five seconds. Okay. Where are we going to... So I can know where to come back in. Oh. Okay, continue. Because this Crash good. trilogy... Has been so successful. This is a really good sign for the future of something that I really that hasn't been happening that I really want to happen. I love the PlayStation One. There were so many like awesome things got their start on the PlayStation One. Sixty Four has some cool shit too, obviously, right? But because that's like early three D, like awkward polygons and stuff, you you don't you don't see a lot of you don't see that stuff make it out of that that generation very often. It kind of just stays there. And um, like, like I, I think this is this is a sign that we're going to see more of this from this era. I think, I think a, a Spyro collection is like obvious, but you know, I think like Square Enix has so many great classics like stuck in the PS One era, like you know Vagrant Story, like Parasite Eve, Ooh, like Xeno Gears, like you know Bushido Blade and. Einhander and and like all kinds of really dope shit that never kind of left that that uh, generation and mm -hmm. hopefully they're looking at this Crash Bandicoot like remake this remaster and go huh there really is money in this so that's that could be cool though like 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 this like the Crash trilogy launched better than it, like we only have UK numbers so far than any other single platform game any any other single platform game that has come out this year. That includes stuff like Horizon. Horizon. Yeah, like, like it, it's Damn. beating everything. That's insane. Yeah. Well, it's because of all those children that grew up playing Crash Bandicoot are grown-ups now. With oh, we're back. Uh, <laughs> You're ruining it. <laughs> You're ruining this, Brad. Anyways. So, the HDMI yeah. cable had un come unplugged from the video mm -hmm. card, which would probably cause it not to be picked mm -hmm. up. For sure. Mm -hmm. Fixed. Problem fixed. Anyways. Crash Bandicoot. You know, I, sh I, I probably should have, like, at E3, I don't know if y'all saw that out in the main hall, like, out away from the actual show floor, out in the, uh, where they have, like, the merch booth and everything, they had a big setup there for Crash Bandicoot, and the lines for that every single day were Oh, yeah, massive. I heard it was hours long. Like, massive. there's some real fans out there, which is kind of weird. I mean, those games are fine, I guess. Right? I'd be more excited for this, and I'd even consider playing it if it... If I had ever like I have I've had a lot of people asking me in chat, like, oh, you gonna play this, you gonna play, you gonna play, you gonna play? There's like crash fans out there, man. I didn't it's crazy. I really underestimated the fan presence for that franchise. I think we all did. Well, I mean you gotta you gotta understand at one point like Crash was kind of like Sony's mascot, you know? Yeah, he was. Yeah. He was the shit talker, you know, with the megaphone, like you know. Yeah. Before Kratos. I mean he, he's like commercial version yeah. at least. It was kind of funny. Yeah. I'll take a Jack and Daxter uh, but are remake, people, Are people into Crash Bandicoot the way they're into, like, Sonic the Hedgehog? No. Mm, no. no. Are they no, in no, it, no, no, they no, in no, it no. for the lulz? N nobody's into anything like Sonic people are into Sonic the Hedgehog. Yeah. Not even I close. literally yeah. into it. Inside it. Inside Not even close. Sonic. Yeah. I, I mean, there are, there are people out there that jerk off to characters from that series. Without a doubt, I'm sure. Myself there are people included. out there that I'm jerk sure. off the characters from every series. Yeah, yeah but including the Golden. Game. Especially, you know, animals, googly eyes. I get it. I mean, I don't get it, but whatever. Teach their own. I what I'd like to see is, can we get a remake? At least, like, you know, like fifteen bucks, whatever. Crash Team Racing remake. Oh, that'd be good. <laughs> you know, you got to do it, right? Yeah. I mean, this was now really that they've successful. done this, I would hope. Yeah, I hope Crash they Team would Racing see is really fun. Yeah. The potential for a Crash Team Racing the most, remake. The most I've ever played of a Crash Bandicoot, Crash Bandicoot game in my life was it in Uncharted was it Uncharted Four? <laughs> and how fun was that? I did not like it at all. Yeah, that was lame. Yeah, Nick, <laughs> Fuck that's Crash, Crash Bandicoot. <laughs> Yeah, but that was just that's, that was like a, that was a chase level though, yeah, right? That's okay, true, yeah. like, I'm saying, that's a whole there game. are side scrolling. Yeah, levels, dude. most yeah, of so. them are side scrolling, but yeah. Okay, that's um, good. You know what? Yeah, yeah, it's just that era. It's growing up. Same thing with like banjo. Like, look at the support that ukulele got. Like those kids 
have money now and they are buying video games in mm-hmm. droves. Yep. That's yep. about it. That's about right. Um, I, w- I hope someone on our site plays it maybe on the beat. I don't know. We'll see. We I mean, see. it ain't Redbox and I fucked up with Gamefly, so sorry. Anyways, uh, that's all the news we have this week. So let's jump straight into uh, into community. We were a little late getting the questions thread up this week. So, but I know we have some questions in there. This week was a little from weird our, from our supporters on Patreon. Yeah, we thought we had an extra day. Turns out uh, we for <laughs> it's Wednesday. Also we're doing the America. podcast on Wednesdays. Oh yeah, yeah. Also, America happened. America threw us off. The community questions of my patrons. All right, uh, first question this week from Cobra. What is your favorite misheard song lyric? Example from Jimi Hendrix, Purple Haze. Excuse, uh, excuse, excuse me. Excuse, I kiss this guy. yeah, but it is it, Texas one. Uh, excuse pardon me, pardon me, isn't yeah. it? Pardon me, yeah, something like that. While I kiss the sky is misheard as excuse me while I kiss that guy. This guy, huh. This guy. This guy, sorry, yeah, is a misheard lyric. Kiss this guy. Um, I'm having one. trouble thinking of some off the there, top of my head. My favorite is "Hold Me Closer, Tony Danza." Tony Danza. I could, you could essentially name almost anything from any Red Hot Chili Pepper song. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of. <laughs> oh my god, um, there's Smash Mouth. There's one song. There's one line from. There's this. I know y'all don't know this band, but of, of Mice and Men, and the I song literally literally starts with, "If I could find the words," but every time I hear it, I hear, "If I could fuck the world," <laughs> every single time. And so I, Nick like, I specifically hear the k- when he's supposed to be saying the word "find," and I'm like, he's not saying "find," he's saying "fuck." So yeah. Yeah. Mm. Good job, man. Uh, I can't think of any off the top of my head. That's yeah, that's kind of a hard thing that you got to go back through your prep for that one. Uh, all right, next question this week from the Legend JP: Do you think a new game in a series could be successful if it went back to the original mechanics slash gameplay style? Tomb Raider, for example. If the next Fallout game had turn-based combat like Fallout One, Two slash Tactics, I think yeah, I think there's always an opportunity, especially after you've, especially after you've like veered off of that original path for so long and you've been successful in it i think any attempt to revitalize it even if that means going back to like a classic version of it i think has plenty of potential to be successful tomb raider we live in a post dark souls world come on bring it back that is true yeah Um, Uh, how about bring make front mission a strategy rpg again or anything. You know, I would just, you know, Final Fantasy is a, like a series that like yeah. has experimented so much and like yeah, do a nine, do a Final that, Fantasy yeah, nine. I've been waiting for like something more, more something that resembles Final Fantasy nine. I've been waiting for that mm, for so yeah. long, and they just keep going more and more like Open realistic world, yeah. looking, like mm-hmm. huge, like. Like, oh, yeah, first yeah, of all, yeah. they keep going like full cast of human characters. And nine, Sid got turned into a frog. Yeah, dude. And like, I, I loved, I loved the world. I loved like just how everything was a little. Well, what was the what's the knight's name? Uh, uh, Steiner. S- Steiner. Yeah, yeah, he's just so fucking goofy and yeah. like big and like. But like, they keep going yeah. cl- farther and farther down that rabbit hole. Like, where all the I, all the characters are human. They all look. They're all like, normal fucking people. And I, I agree with you. Nick. Too similar to ours. You, even though you, you know, eight is still my favorite you, Final Fantasy, just because it was my first, and they are very humanoid yeah. in that game. I will say that that was the charm that nine brought with that the character style and stuff was definitely I liked that. Yeah, yeah. for sure. I completely agree with you, Nick. But do you know why they don't do that? Do you know why we don't get those games that you're Furries. talking about? No, because Final Fantasy fifteen. Ah, uh, that's true. Does that? That does. Yeah, Final Fantasy where 15 has all of, all those all of their like medieval like, fantasy, magic, black mage, white mage, all that shit. That's reserved for the MMO now. It's not reserved. Oh, you, see, you but mean, they you make mean, lots of Fantasy money from 14, that. Not 15. He, or, he he I said 15. I meant 14. I was, I was 14. like very confused yeah. for a yeah, but, 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 but I mean, that's because that's so obvious was the same for way too. MMOs. Yeah. yeah. I mean, well, you know what? Break this shit free because I don't want to play no fucking MMO. But I do miss when Final Fantasy was good. 
Uh, all right, let's move on. Mr. Green Toast asks, what are some of your favorite video game sound effects? For example, I always mm. love the sound effect whenever you enter vats in the Fallout games or yeah. to nail a headshot with a sniper in Battlefield Such 1. Such a nostalgia-driven thing, though, I think. Oh, no, I, it often is, yeah. I, I like the... F this is kind of weird. Right? In Resident Evil... Oh, a lot of the Resident Evils. I always think back to Resident Evil 2, the, uh, just the footsteps of like when you're running through the police station and it's like echoing. That's like... I don't, I don't, no, I don't, I don't for whatever reason, that noise is very. I mean, all like it me. was filled with awesome sound effects. Yeah, nostalgia. Sound I think effects. like the the barrel breaking sound effects from mm -hmm. Donkey Kong Country mm -hmm. oh, were oddly yeah. satisfying. All the, no, they, those were yeah. all the Diablo two drops. Each had like depending on what it is, whether it's an amulet, a ring, oh, like 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 like, different like gold. It all had like different sound Pink. effects. Uh, another good one for one for me is uh, Silent Hill. The uh, the save save points. When you actually like mm. click into it, and it's like it makes that weird noise, and then all, and also the just the sound effects when you're going through the menu in Silent Hill, I've always loved. Yeah, someone text me. L let me see if y'all can get this the sound effect. Come on, someone text me. We'd have to turn my phone out of airplane mode. Yeah, which I'm not gonna do right unless next you've to the changed mic. it. I already know what it is. Yeah, you can wait. What is it? I've changed. You do realize it. you have technology, and you can just go, hey, play this. Audio. So it's not the morph ball bomb anymore. Not anymore. Oh. Well, can you, uh, since you can't do it, can yes. you tell us? Like, uh, Prince of the Universe, some some of the Phoenix Wright stuff, like when the when the judge pounds his gavel, like in the middle of like mm. uh, the the court mission and stuff like that, or just yeah, that's a good one. Mm. Metal Gear Solid in their series oh, is full yeah. of some pretty a iconic, lot of sound effects, lovely yeah. sound effects, yeah. echoey sound effects. I'm trying to think. There's one game I'm trying to think of where you go upstairs a lot, and that sound of the going up, and I cannot think of what the game is. Like I know oh, it's like frustrating me. You go upstairs. Yeah, or you kind of like uh, you interact with stairs, and you like t -t 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 like as you're going up. And I just can't remember what it is. I'd be happy to read some off in chat if people want to throw some out there. I know uh, Ultimate Inferno obviously brings up the Kodak from Metal Solid. Uh, Nitrome says the home run sound effect in Super Smash. Oh, oh yeah. 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 yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> Uh, we were talking about it before the show, but whenever you get like a headshot in The Last of Us, oh yeah, it's so squishy, so yeah. so <laughs> squishy, so delightfully juicy. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I mean, well, you know, if any, right. if any other good examples come up, next I'll, I'll, I'll has some good sound effects. I'll drop Moving them. on, Sir Thomas Thipple asks. Do any of you like to listen to music when you nap slash sleep? If so, what kind? Specific song or artist you prefer? Mine right now is number three by. Aphex Twin off of Selected Ambient Works Volume 2. Shift makes you feel like you're floating into space. I don't listen to music when I'm trying to sleep. I listen to, like, you know, rain sound effects and shit like yeah, that. Yeah, I mean, I've. I, I don't. I, you know what I listen to when I sleep? The sound of a fan. Yeah, that's fan. about it. I, fan. I, 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 fans so I will say, when too. I was younger, I did often listen to music uh, as I was going to sleep. Uh, but I grew out of that. Uh, I don't really like sound when I'm going to sleep. No? I mean, I can sleep if there's audio going. I still can. It's just I I prefer just silence. Kind of. I, I don't get me wrong. I listen to soundtracks of stuff all the time when I'm not sleeping. But Robin has a pretty I unusual thing that sounds. she listens to when she's going to sleep. I'm. Just not, I don't think I'm going to out out that though. I I use, I don't <laughs> typically listen to anything when I'm going to sleep either. I kind of got like I used to like watch tv like have have dvds and stuff playing when i'd go to sleep all the time it kind of got weird for me though because like I, I got tired of like hearing the constant loop of like dvd menus coming up in my dreams oh. where like <laughs> it'd go for like an hour and then it would eventually just like wake me up but i will say if you're looking for a good dvd to put on when you're falling asleep from hell the dvd menu for it is surprisingly like yeah. very calm and like kind of neat ambiance. Which yes, the DVD hell. menu. The DVD menu for From Hell. Yes. Who was in Bizarre. From Hell? Johnny Depp. John, Johnny Depp. Yeah. Just get some sleep sounds, man. There's the go. You, you can create your own. I can't. I don't. I don't use sleep sounds. I can't. I'm just saying. I can't. I have trouble sleeping in a room where there's like a TV on, like when there's like a bunch of light. So that's always been the the barrier to entry for me when it comes to that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sound is fine. But if, if it's like light shining in my face, yeah, not as easy. Uh, well, that's all the questions this week. No. Uh, probably just because we didn't get to yeah, we were late getting today. It up. Yeah, has so. my B. Um, but we'll, we'll have the thread up earlier next time. 
Uh, but yeah, so any question, any patron can ask any question they like, uh, and we answer that, obviously. And if you're too. interested in supporting us on Patreon, you can find us at patreon.com slash foreplayer. Mm-hmm. Um, or foreplayer.com slash Patreon. Or that, yeah. It works both ways. Yeah. Um, all right, but now I think it's time to wrap up the show. Four player minute. You know what time it is. Yeah, it's 10.50. Brett. Yes, Brad, are you Nolan, ready? Nolan, go. All righty, my four player minute starts right as soon as I pull up the list. Now, um, my hype uh, is for uh, The Last of Us Grounded mode. I, while I assume uh, however much I end up playing of that will lead to nothing but frustration. Oh, I can't say nothing but frustration. To great frustrations. Uh, I still did really enjoy the feeling I got when, like, the, the tense moments of not being able to use listen mode and kind of, you know, it just it definitely keeps you more alert. Uh, you don't feel like I guess it's overpowered. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, you like the most bullets I ever had when I was playing was like five. Um, but yeah, so I'm I'm pretty hyped to play a little more of that. Uh, so my sweat kind of brings up uh, Nick's point earlier, asking me how much Persona Five I've played. I I don't know what to play, and the problem is there's nothing new coming out like immediately. Uh, but I have since this year started. I have started so many games and not finished them. Uh, Neo, Prey, Horizon, Persona Wait, 5. Wait, did you tell me you picked up Horizon? Yeah, it's right there. It's sitting on top of my shelf. Oh, okay. I yeah. bought it because it was on sale yeah. and I had a coupon or I had uh, some like Amazon credit. And so I ended up picking it up. I got it for 15 bucks. Holy shit, that's a good deal. No, it definitely is a good deal. But it's more of a, when the fuck am I going to play it? Uh, you just and, gotta pick one and just focus on yeah, it. I know that's the problem. Is I need to just like buckle down and just play one. But the problem is, all these games I've listed are not games that you just like rush to the end of. You know what I'm saying? Like Horizon is not a game you just rush to the end of. You explore the world and and stuff. Prey, you don't just rush to the end of it. I mean, I guess Persona Five you do, but rushing to the end would take like a hundred hours. And so you know, it's just like one of those things where it's like I have no like game I can just knock out. You, real do quick. you? Cause zero, you could knock it out in like sixty hours. Don't fucking do this to me, Brad. Do you, I, you know, what? I want to play that game. You would really love. Dude, I'm sure I would. I'm sure I'd love the shit wait, wait, out wait, of wait, it. Which game did you just? Yakuza suggest? Zero. Yakuza oh. Zero. I'm sure I would fucking love it. So funny. I just got the um, ability right. to throw them uh, My thank uh, goes to Crispy, uh, because earlier he mentioned Jujubees, which I completely have forgotten about. I used to love those in high school. Uh, like you forgot Jujubees existed? Yeah, and so within five minutes of him mentioning that... I, I don't even know a, what those are. I have a pack of them on the way to the house, or like 12, like, like 12 like mini packs or something. I don't know. It was on Amazon. I bought it. Uh, so I'm getting some Jujubees. I'll have them on the show next week for you, Nick. Uh, and then my fuck you this week goes to Ubisoft... Uh, because they did a soft launch of South Park Phone Destroyer just in, like, Europe. And it's not here. And, like, you know, people are tweeting at me. Oh, how are you liking Phone Destroyer? And I'm like, what are you talking about? It's not fucking out yet. Is the word pretty good? Yeah, apparently it's pretty good. Hmm. Uh, and so I'm just waiting for it to come out over here. Um, uh, I'm tr- sorry. I'm trying to remember who was tweeting me about it. And I, I always feel bad because I have Turbo Ma was uh, saying that he's been playing it and really enjoying it. <laughs> Um, so I, I'm, fuck you, Ubisoft. Release that shit already. Hi, right. I'm ready. Hi, right, Brad. My hype is for the Evil Within Two. That trailer, that footage that we saw looks really good. And I playing some Evil with like as I was playing both DLCs, it made me just want to actually boot up Evil Within proper because I really like Evil Within. Yep. And it's so good, and I can't wait for two, and it comes out soon. Who would have thought? That's, yep. that's the best thing about Bethesda's conference is that everything they did show we know is coming soon. And, and I'm excited for what Tango does after this. Who knows? Um, my sweat is... <laughs> this is probably going to be like this for a while. But the new Metroid, uh, Samus Returns, and Beyond Good and Evil 2. Two things I care about a lot that I'm a little worried about these upcoming projects. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. You, oh, won't, it, you, won't, f- you won't have to wait too long on the Metroid one. Fuck you to Europe for your little... Samus Returns Special Edition. It's redonkulous. There's a uh, there's a, a still book. What do they call those? Steelbooks. 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 Steelbooks that lo- just looks like a Game Boy cartridge. Uh, that's like it cool. just looks like the Metroid 2 Game Boy cartridge. That's cool. It's really cool. Um, but whatever. My fuck you um, uh, goes to... My real fuck you goes to the Steam Cell this year. I didn't get anything because Steam Cells suck 
Fuck you, so Steam. I, I what did a, you do? I had a long conversation with uh, well, yesterday, actually, during Fourth of July, uh, with you know my frustration that Steam sales used to be so exciting because there was the flash sales and mm-hmm. the daily deals, and it was always just fucking big event. Yeah. But the problem is they don't care. Anymore. No, it's not that it's Steam. It returns. If they had the ability to. Uh, if they did flash sales, they would be constantly getting returns of people. Oh, I didn't get it when it was on flash sale. I, I want to return it so I can buy it again. And they would they would just be their their system would be flooded with return requests. Oh, I bought this you know, four days ago, and so I think that's honestly why they did it. Now, hopefully, they can come up with some fucking solution to that. I don't know because yes, I agree with you. I miss when Steam sales used to be like an exciting event. There is a way to do it, like to make it. I mean, they have to be making less money Probably. from these sales. Oh, I'm sure they are. So, like, this can't keep going, But, Brad, right? the stickers. You get stickers, oh, uh, for, and, you, and then you have a sticker for some reason. I don't know. I don't know my thank you goes to my lovely wife, who uh, not only has been playing uh, Diablo with me, but she helped me knock out the uh, subscriber of the month game for uh for this past month, uh, three nil, we played through uh, Streets of Rage two. Nice. Well, we got to the last level and we ate shit, but uh, <laughs> yeah, we had a good time. It was silly. We kept accidentally picking Skate, who's terrible. Um, it's yeah, but it's, it's Streets of Rage two, man. Like I, I think I think we might be playing some more brawlers in the future because we had a good time and she could she picked up pretty quick, picked up on. You know what that game was putting down. She wasn't doing the super move because you know it takes life. But yeah, yeah, cool. Maybe we'll play you know one of the D and D ones. All right, crispy. crispy. My okay. So I wrote my four player minute. Oh, look at you! Last week we got a bat. Oh, so we I, got I don't remember answer. exactly what I wrote. So let's just see and well, see how it goes. Um, my hype is for. Baby Driver. Baby Driver, yeah. <laughs> uh, is for uh, the Diablo 3 Necromancer. And I am excited about getting that that uh, that DLC. I just gotta I gotta get my, my Diablo crew whipped back into shape. I'm gonna round to doing it. Uh, but that shit you were the footage you were showing today, especially Brad looked sick. I love Necromancer. That was that was my favorite class in two, in Diablo 2. Uh, my sweat is for Dead Cell, presumably because of time. <laughs> I would have mm. to. I just wrote Dead Cell. <laughs> um, so yeah, my sweat is for Dead Cell and all the other unknown, kind of uh, cropping up at the last minute. Early good access games. games. Mm, yeah. that are, maybe that's your sweat. Uh, maybe early access. I was gonna say like games that are jumping out of the woodwork right at the last minute and then just like being really great and kind of demanding your attention. Because I, yeah. I have very little of it to go around. Um, my fuck you... Oh, this is a good one. My fuck you goes... And what I wrote was... Goes to Notch for being a... <laughs> C word. As yeah. always. Yeah, I cool. saw that. Um, I didn't see this. We'll talk about it after. Yeah, yeah. You just, it's not something you really want to just, talk about on the podcast. Just type in his name into Google and hit the news tab. And I'm sure... <laughs> It's a whole list of reasons why that guy sucks. Uh, and my thank you goes to uh, whose ever idea it was to make the Singapore version of Gundam Breaker 3 all in English. Everything with the exception of voice acting is done in English, and I assume they did that so that Western fans could import the game because they couldn't get the, the license to release it directly in the West. So whoever did that... Thank you. Thanks. A lot of Asian versions of games are like that, where they'll have English text, but, you know. Well, this was a separate one, because the Japanese version is still straight, all yeah. Japanese. Yeah. But this um, one, like, everything. I'm an Asian, like, the t- actual, they call it the Asian version. Yeah. Yeah. Which is specific for Asian regions that aren't the Japan. Asia, Asia um, continent. Yeah. Did you, did you finish Zero Mission? No. Oh. All right, it's my turn. My hype this week goes to, and this is weird because I don't have a whole lot to look forward to in, in terms of this, but VR. Um, I've been thinking about it a lot lately. I've been kind of reminiscing about my time with Resident Evil 7 a lot. I'm, I, I remember playing Moss at, at E3 and, and being really excited and like really impressed by how, how well that game looked and how, really, how well yeah. it played. Um, I, that's probably the only thing I can think of coming up before the end of this year that I'm going to be playing in VR. 
Um, but I'm very much looking forward to it. And I'm just like, I keep thinking about it, and I'm like, I never thought in a million years I would be excited for VR as like a platform. But it feels like it does, like especially now that I'm starting to see the potential of like VR for more than just first person games. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm super. Fun. I really, really hope it finds its footing and becomes more. Could you of a imagine thing. playing Next Machina in in three in VR? Dude, Dude, there's so much I can think about. Someone's VR. got Metroid Prime running in Dolphin in VR. What? Yeah. Dude, that's, that's fucking cool. nuts. Dude, it, that's insane. I, yeah. You know, I was trying. I, when I was at E3, I was actually trying to. I was talking to someone on Twitter from Devolver about. I was trying to set up an. Because they had a Talos principle at at E3 in, in VR. VR. I don't know. And I and I got I ended up having to go to an appointment and by the time I finished my appointment I forgot that I had been talking to him about setting this up and I forgot about it. But like I got back. I, th and I, I like, thought you were gonna say Devolver had genital yeah. jousting in VR. No. <laughs> if if only. It's like waggling uh, in your face. My sweat goes to the epic Hollow Knight. Uh, what? It's New Evil Within. Two yes, stuff? yes, it is. It is. Uh, Hollow Knight. The the saga continues. Um, there seems to be more and more news about the Switch version, which is kind of what I'm holding out for. And I'm I'm still really I'm a little nervous. I'm really worried. I'm not going to get to play it before the end of the year if I'm if I'm really going to stick to my guns and hold out for the Switch version. But they're talking about now that it might get a physical release on the Switch, mm. which I, if if that's the case, I'm totally going to hold out for that. Um, but yeah, I really 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 want to make sure I play that before the end of the year. That's pretty good. Um, my fuck you of the week goes to I, I may have mentioned this last week about the. Uh, Limbo and Inside uh, mm -hmm. Double Pack coming yeah, out. It's yep. getting a physical release. Mm -hmm. uh, turns out, like, I don't know if they put it up for pre-order and then it, like, sold out because they're doing, like, limited numbers or something, but it's, like, it's up on Amazon, but it's unav It's currently unavailable. Mm. So, it's, like, I don't, I don't know what's going on there, but fuck you. Fix that shit. That, that shouldn't be hard to find. Um, and my thank you of the week goes to everyone for birthday wishes and and things thank you chris davis for the gummy bears and thank you nolan for the, the the question mark lamp thingy which i have not yet figured out where i'm gonna put but i'm working on it cool and uh thank you to all the people out there who sent me birthday wishes on twitter and in discord on facebook uh all that stuff thanks to robin she made me a cake she got me headless or uh, wireless uh earbuds which are great bose wireless earbuds um, which are like life changing, <laughs> and uh, yeah, thanks everybody. That was that, it was a very lovely birthday. I appreciate it. And with that, I think we're done. I think that's the show. Thank you. Uh, fourplayernetwork.com is the website, of course. And as I mentioned at the start of the show, please join us in Discord. It's Discord.gg/fourplayer. We'd love to have you in there. Um, reminder: podcast this, this month for the month of July will continue to be on Wednesday, Wednesday nights. Uh, and then we'll go back to Thursday once we are able to do so, which should be in August, right? Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, join us again next Wednesday for another episode. Videos. What? Videos. Oh, E3 videos. We're working on them right now. We're almost, we're, we're making good progress on it. We should have them out, trickling out very, 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 very soon. Um, those are going to be our top, our, our 20 favorite games that we saw at the show. So look for those. Uh, I would say probably within the next couple of days, you'll start seeing the, the first few coming out there should be 20 games that y'all should be able to look forward to uh maybe that maybe some stuff that you didn't didn't really pay much attention to when, when it was getting coverage out there but uh we are excited we want you guys to be excited so check out those videos when they're out they'll be available on the site at fourplayernetwork.com they'll be up on youtube they'll be in our twitter accounts all that good stuff you can't you should have any trouble finding them yep. and that's it guys thank you for listening good night bye bye